It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God here. Uh, another episode of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. And this episode is sponsored by Boost Mobile. With Boost Mobile, you have everything you could want in a wireless carrier. With no annual service contract, Boost Mobile offers a range of plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices, all right? Uh, step up with Boost Mobile and switch today. If you want a super reliable, super fast nationwide network to keep you connected, switch now. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com or retailer for full details. Uh, now, this is the part of the show where we do church announcements, but ain't nobody going no fucking way. Coronavirus is rescheduled every goddamn thing. Ain't nothing moving. All right. Nothing. Okay. Shit is dead. Ain't no stand up shows. Only thing you can catch us doing is uh, broadcasting on the Breakfast Club, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And you can catch this podcast. You can go out while you're sitting around quarantine because I saw something this morning and I said, oh, yeah, people are quarantined for real. Uh, my first book, Black Privilege Opportunity, comes to those who create it. I was on Amazon this morning for whatever reason and it was. The bestseller tag was next to it, and it said number one in general broadcasting. So people is out here buying books, and it was the Audible book. So I, I people are out here downloading uh, content off Audible, and I know me personally. I bought two new books yesterday on Amazon. I bought um, I bought uh, the Seven Spiritual Laws of Success because I, I listened to it on Audible, but then I wanted to own it, so I bought that. And then I bought this book about uh, Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X's friendship. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's not Blood Brothers. That's one book, but it was another one. But I read that. So, yeah, go on Audible, go on Amazon, and buy some books, preferably, uh, you know, Black Privilege and Shook One. But, you know, take this time to strengthen your mental. But other than that, ain't shit moving, bae. Now back to the show. Now, the, the good brother Andrew Schultz is not here today. The reason Andrew is not here because Andrew refused to step foot into the iHeartRadio building because he said it's full of corona. He wanted me to come to his studio in Brooklyn. I said, well, how, how do I know that your spot not full of corona? And he said, you don't. And I said, well, we all taking risks. So being that you don't want to risk coming here, I don't want to risk coming there. So I guess we'll convene at another time. I'll figure out a better solution for next week. So I had to call uh, two brothers that I, I highly respect, uh, two brothers that I call friends, two brothers who, you know, when I think about the term industry, right, and me and Wayno, we've had this conversation before, and people try to look at the industry like it's a bad thing, but we all came up together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we all have done things our way and created our own lane. So I don't know if you can necessarily call us the typical industry Negroes, because we didn't have to do what other industry Negroes had to do to get in these positions. But uh, the good brother Hovain is here. Peace, peace. Manager extraordinaire. Run the resume down one time, Hovain. Oh, man. Uh, manager, executive, uh, work with the locks, T Pain, Styles P, um, Lil Kel, Lil Soldier, a bunch of artists, man. And what's bunch the name of the artists. company? Cinematic. 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 And the good brother Wayno is here and all for Asylum Records, host of Everyday Struggle. Yes, yes. Ha happy to have y'all here, man. Yes. Thank you. Happy to be here. Happy to be here for where, the where the Boost Mobile phones? You promised us some Boost Mobile phones. No, I Wayno. just did a sponsorship. Yeah. Salute the Boost. You I know take what I mean? Phone. I take, take a phone, phone too. Yeah. Yeah. You use extra phone. Now, Hope, have you been there before? Never, never. Ne Wayno's definitely been there before. Wayno, you ain't been there since we've been doing these segments. Nah, I haven't, man. This like my damn. This like my fourth time. This like my idiot. first time. Bro. Right? I used to watch like damn niggas on first time. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted to be talking, Ho. Yeah, you, you, you be in the background. Twenty twenty, man. Yeah. For content is the king. Content is definitely king, especially right now since everybody's quarantined with this goddamn coronavirus. That's right. Yeah. And so that's why we here today. And we do a segment now on Brilliant Idiots called Positively Brilliant and What a Fucking Idiot. And it's where we just rattle off what we think was brilliant for the past week mm -hmm. and what we think was fucking idiotic for the past week. I'm gonna start off. Off, you know, uh, by simply, we normally let y'all start off. Hold, what did you think was brilliant this week? Um, I think what was brilliant this week. Um, I see a lot of stores that are opening early so the elderly can come in and shop. Yes. I think that's brilliant. Have that is come brilliant. in seven in the morning. If they have a compromised immune system or you're a little bit elderly, you come and shop and you ain't got to deal with the rest of us wolves trying to get our supplies. <laughs> By the way, why hasn't nobody made that a hustle yet? Why hasn't nobody, you Nick's know, not. been the person that goes and shops for elderly people where yeah. old people, the elderly can call you and you go do their grocery shopping for them? Where y'all little hustling cause, motherfuckers cause at? Niggas ain't trying to do kind gestures, man. They, exactly. they, they like, man, elderly. 
really how much they paying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's exactly. what people really worried about. But that's bro. cool though, because yeah. to me that's like you know the kids that come to shovel your snow when it snows real yeah, crazy. Yeah, like yeah. that's a hustle. If you know you got old people in your neighborhood mm-hmm. and they may need something from the store, go get their groceries. Let's let them throw you a couple dollars yep. and go do their grocery shopping for them. That's if, y'all listen, right if y'all listen to this right now, go ahead, go, go bust a move. move. Yeah, go bust a move with that. That sounds like a good one. Wayne, mm-hmm. what did you see this week that you thought was uh, positively brilliant? Positively brilliant. Damn. Let me see. Uh, I've been kind of uh, not seeing too much going on. Like, I I really been just watching television more yeah, than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't really, really noticed, like, what, what's going on outside. I mean, one thing that I, that I do see is that the corner stores in the hood is still open and they don't have lines the way Acme or Walmart has. So it's like one of the things I think is brilliant is is going right back to where we started from. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's like, I, I don't live in the hood, but I have I had to go to the hood to pick up a few things. Absolutely. But you can only do that because you from the hood. Right. If you ain't never been from the hood, if you ain't from the ghetto, if you never grew up in a rural area in South yeah. Carolina, you you not equipped with that kind of energy yeah. to even go into that jungle. Right. That's why I said in a moment like this, the ghetto people, going, the so-called ghetto people, we yeah. gonna be the ones that we survive. survive. Absolutely. The we ones that's been making nothing. something out of nothing for so motherfucking long that, that, that got a taste for peanut butter and jelly. Right. And oodles and noodles. <laughs> you know hey, well, not, not if you're not one of my kids because these, these niggas, they eat food like it's going out of style, man. I'm like, damn, Yo. we just got the groceries. They done went through a quarter of it. Like, what's good? Yo, I got a cheat code for people. I'm going to share this with y'all just because y'all my people. Right. I know Amazon is like backed up with the food and all that. Omaha Steaks. Omaha Steaks? Two days. They got fish, shrimp, lobster. You get a whole meal. You get. You got to go on their website? Yeah, Omaha right, Steaks. They deliver it to you? They deliver it. You be there in two days, bro. You going to be mad as hell when you go to order and it's sold out. And it's right, your right, fault. Right. So it's passing the plug. But you know what? You know, I feel for the people, though, who don't, like, who might not be in the same position as us that can just do that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like we, we so. able to, to go on and, and grab whatever we want. I'm really feeling for the people right now who, like, they they live in check to check or or living you know um based on their hours that they getting at mm-hmm. their job you know what I mean like that's that's the people I'm feeling for right now it's nah, terrible I, me too they, I mean you know Trump supposed to be doing a, a trillion dollar bailout for not just the corporations he's talking about putting some money in people's pockets as well but I'm gonna tell you something I don't even think money matters at a time like this because we talking about health right yeah at the end of the day it don't matter how much money you got in your pocket that's true if your if your if your immune system is compromised and you catch this goddamn coronavirus. It's a wrap. It can't no amount of money save you. Well, you know what's crazy too. I, I also want to. I want people to stop thinking that like that. We, if you get the coronavirus, that a xenomorph is gonna pop out your chest. You know what I mean? Because that's how niggas yeah, is acting. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I mean, there's people. It, it affects people who have like respiratory problems and older people mostly. Yeah. But nobody's talking about the people who are actually fighting it back. You know what I mean? The people who actually have caught it and are doing something about it, not just due to money. Yeah, it's not enough yeah. recovery stories. Being yeah, told. it's not. It's just I, like yo, you instant death. This is the narrative gonna, that they're painting. Yes. Right. You know I'm, I'm not going to front. I wasn't taking it serious last week. You know what I mean? Chris said something on the podcast last week that it hit me later on. And I actually text Chris about it. I said, oh, I see what you're saying. Because it's the fact that the healthcare system will be so motherfucking compromised. The healthcare system will be so fucked up because there's only 900,000 hospital beds in America. It's 95,000 hospital beds in uh, the, the ICU. So right. if everybody's rushing to the hospital because they got coronavirus oh, yeah. or whatever else, what about the person who's having a heart attack? Mm. What about the person who, the people this week who was supposed to have surgeries, but the surgeries pushed had to get back. pushed back? Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like America's just not equipped to handle that shit. It's like, I think I read somewhere, it's like 6,400 hospitals in America. America's not ready That's for this nuts. overflow of people that will be in the hospital because of the coronavirus. That's what Chris was trying to tell us last week. Yeah. But it didn't dawn on me till later, like what he was saying. So it's not even that the fact that the disease is so fatal. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that that shit will cause problems for people who actually have real life threatening problems. Yo, Healthcare that shit professionals. Is yeah. The I have a problem with them ignorant people that, that didn't take it OD serious until they canceled the NBA. <laughs> when I see the NBA shit happen, I was like, oh shit, for it real. It was a combination like, for me. I was taking it a little bit serious. Yeah. But then there's the NBA, then Tom Hanks. I was like, see, we got to stop that. I was like, hold on. I know. I was but like, it's America's obsession with celebrity. Yes. I mean, you tell me, at the, by the time Tom Hanks had it, over 100,000 people in the world had it. Like, like 4,000, 5,000 people were dead. And we don't take it serious till goddamn the star of Big get it, the greatest actor. To me, the greatest actor of all time. That's yeah. We don't take it serious till him and his wife get it. That's why I ain't gonna lie, yo. Nobody in the hood, in the hood niggas is not taking it serious yeah. at all. I think the NBA was like stopping of money. 
Like, so when you see the money Boom. stop, it was yeah. like, the white nah, man don't nah, stop nah, the nah. money, yeah. It's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's going on. Then right. baseball follows suit, and the NHL said, no, no. Maybe we overlooking the seriousness ESPN, of this. ESPN is just first take all day talking about when it's going to come back. That's all <laughs> Yo, it is. ESPN about to start showing Baby Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's That's crazy. crazy? I'm sitting there talking to y'all, talking about we, we so obsessed with celebrity. I didn't take it serious till I saw one person worried. Oh. And that's why that person is positively brilliant. I was I, I saw Donald Trump talking about it, and I was like, oh, okay, he said it's a hoax. But I said, if he said it's a hoax, it's probably a lie. I saw all those people die in China. I saw quarantine. Uh, Italy get quarantined. Tom yeah. Hanks got it. But nothing hit me until I heard Cardi B get worried. When Cardi B said, <laughs> when Cardi B got on Instagram and she was worried, yeah. that's when I was worried. And that little rant that she did turned into this motherfucking song that I got to put in Positively Brilliant because this shit charted on Apple. <laughs> Something fair. that both of y'all can both appreciate because y'all in the motherfucking, y'all are executives. Right. Let me hear, let me hear the Cardi B coronavirus record, please. Hey, hey. Hey. Oh man! It's Cardi's voice. Cardi can make anything a hit. Yo, she's she can make here. anything a motherfucking hit, man. The problem I think that you will have with Cardi is when you try to structure her. Yeah, you mm. can't. You got to get that. That's that. That's that natural organic energy. You almost got to let her just go in the booth and freestyle. And see what you get out of it, yo. I don't yeah. know about that, but um, <laughs> 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 but but no, I like. It's just, we live in crazy times, man. Okay. We live in crazy times. It's like, while this is so serious and we, like, we, in the same breath that we having about how we taking it serious and mm -hmm. all that, here's a song made out of a clip of her talking about it and everybody's celebrating the fact that this shit is number 10, but people is dying behind yeah. it. With the messaging of the song, it's the truth. I mean, the Coronavirus, <laughs> this shit is real. No, this shit, <laughs> this shit is real. This shit is real. Think about it. You just said people in the hood not taking it serious. Niggas is not going to take it serious. Niggas not taking it serious. They're going to dance to this. It's going it's gonna to be a mixtape after this for somebody. <laughs> you like. know why they're taking it serious now? Because that message is clear and to the point. <laughs> Coronavirus shit is real. Kevin Durant got it. Yeah, Idris Elba oh, guy, okay, Idris Elba. Yeah. motherfuckers that people actually fuck with. Now you just now what you need is a real hood nigga. I'm gonna tell you, you know it's been a fucking me up though. Nigga to get it. The past week, my mind been playing tricks on me this whole last week. So the most normal shit, like right now, it's like allergy season. Man, I tell fucking me about sneeze, it. I cough. I'm in a car by myself, and I'm like, my, I'm like, damn, because <laughs> <laughs> like I was working out the day before, so naturally my body is hurting. Yeah, but then yeah. I'm sitting here, I cough, and I'm like. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, I've held in 10 coughs since I've been in here just because I don't want to scare y'all. A, a cough is like brandishing a gun nowadays. <laughs> a sneeze is a gunshot. Man. Niggas duck when a sneeze comes Niggas out. Niggas duck I sneeze. was in the grocery store yesterday getting some water, take it to my mom's, and we in the aisle. It was like a couple was me and like seven, eight white people yeah. and a white lady sneeze. <laughs> everybody everybody, everybody. Hit the fucking deck. No, they wanted to fight. They looked down like, yo, bitch, nah, we man. kill you in here. That ain't cool, though, no, man, because like, I mean, like, like Wayne don't say, I got allergies. I got Zyrtex in the bag, yeah. you know what I mean? And I got reoccurring bronchitis. So when oh, my allergies start fucking up, take your bronchitis medicine before you leave the house. God, damn, <laughs> take everything you need. Yeah, it's like, you can't win with this shit. And man. I'm sitting there with gloves on. It might, be too, it might be too late. You was talking about Cardi earlier, though. You said, um, what'd you say? You said that, what'd you say? You was talking about other, the other women that's on the, on, on her heels, kind of? No, I, I I was saying that uh, she got to, you know, she do got to put some, aside from everything that's going on, she def I definitely want to see her put some new music out. And shit. Does she need to put music out? I mean, listen, it, Andre 3000 said you can't afford to not record. So it's like... That's a different it, time, though. It, it, it's, it's a different time, but I, I don't think she needs to, but... Man, we we don't want our favorite artist to drop music anymore. Here, like here's the I, thing. I was two years ago. Cardi B mm -hmm. was my favorite person mm -hmm. before she was my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. And okay. to me, that's the brilliance of Cardi B. That's that's why I got her in the positively brilliant second. She was one of my she was one of my favorite people yeah. before she was my favorite artist. So I, I years ago, mm -hmm. I would say Cardi B is gonna be a star. I didn't know what she was going to be a star at. Right. I just knew she had that star quality. Yeah. It just so happened she decided to give us music. But Cardi can do anything. She can give us an album. I mean, she can give us a movie. We probably love it. She can give us a TV show. We probably love it. She does Instagram rants now, just like she used to do back in the day. Yeah. The only difference is now her voice so big, they fucking chart. Yo, I seen her do something the other day. I forgot what it was she posted. She had a million views on Instagram, and it was 
15 minutes or 10 it was no it was like 8 minutes she's a superstar it was a million views yeah it was insane she was a superstar before she was a superstar though is what yeah. I'm saying so so I don't even know if she needs music when she can do stuff like this she, going, she about to chart with this shit I mean What's but it's <laughs> hey hey <laughs> who produced it I I am Marquis <laughs> this is a hit hey 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 Hey, don't fuck, hey, you fuck around the CDC is gonna license this shit. <laughs> and this is gonna be PSAs all on TV, all on the radio with this song playing. That's it. Donald Trump win the next election, he gonna walk out to this shit. Right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, he's a cold motherfucker. Maybe. If, if Donald Trump came on TV today because he's doing another uh, uh, press, press conference today, mm -hmm. if he gets on there today and says, look, Cardi B said this shit is getting real. And you, so you know shit is getting real. You think he, he gets the black vote instantly from that? Instantly. He'll get that. <laughs> he'll, get, he'll get that instantly. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> he, get, he give niggas a thousand dollars and play some Cardi B? That. A thousand dollars and play Cardi B? That. Be, yeah. That, that people fair, start saying okay. my president, but yeah. that just goes to show you how impressionable. Like, children aren't the only people that are, like, uh, easily impressionable. No, no. I, I, got, I got I, I to put Donald Trump in the what a fucking idiot category, too, though, because a, a month ago, you know, he was the one saying that this shit was a hoax. Mm -hmm. They got it all under control. It's only one person from China and they got him contained. Now, a month later, he's telling us that the coronavirus, this shit is real. And that's a pandemic. And he thought it was a pandemic from the beginning. It's like this to me, he's an idiot because he didn't even have to put himself in that position. You're the president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Defer to the experts. He fired all the experts, that's, remember? That's what I'm saying. You fired all the <laughs> experts back in 2016. You fired the global pandemic team. But my thing is just like... Mm -hmm. I don't know record label shit like that. Y'all are executives. If yeah. I'm here and I got a question, I'm going to just fall back and let y'all handle it. Oh, yeah. Let absolutely. the experts handle it. But you're not a narcissist. Narcissists don't fall back and appoint people or yeah, uh, drivel out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, he's 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 running uh, his his office like a label, like where he just hired all his friends. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> fire just, them. Yeah, fire <laughs> niggas that was in there actually doing shit. And then he just hired... A bunch of niggas that just like, all right, man, yes, y'all been fucking me for that. Like, <laughs> Definitely yes, man. So therefore, yeah. nobody knows what the fuck they doing. Yeah. And now you end up in a situation like this, and you got a back. And listen, there's nothing wrong with changing your mind. About no, that. no, no, no. When, when you get you, more information, it's cool. Boom. But that yeah. information was there for you from December. But right. You, but you know what you got to do? Once you get new information and you you make a declarative statement like, this shit is a hoax, it's, it's, we, we going to get past this? You first got to say, I was, right, wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Right. Guys, I was wrong. This coronavirus, this shit is motherfucking this shit is real. real. That's right. it. And you keep it moving from there. Yeah. And that's why I got to put him in the what a fucking idiot shit. I'm going to tell you who else I got to put in the what a fucking idiot shit. Um, Meek, I'm not, not Meek Mill, but Steve Keeley of Fox 29 in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all saw this tweet yesterday, but he tweeted out breaking Philly police oh, yeah. officers instructed to stop making arrests for following for the following list of what are considered nonviolent crimes. All narcotic offenses, theft from persons, retail theft, theft from auto, burglary, vandalism, all bench warrants, stolen auto, economic crimes like like check fraud and prostitution. You turn this shit into grand theft auto. That's what do Meek whatever Mill you want to do. Posted Meek Mill. Amsterdam. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Meek Mill tweeted that and put Grand Theft Auto 6 about to start tonight in Philly. Yeah. yeah. I saw people saying, oh shit, the purge. The problem I have with Steve Keeley, and I gotta put him in the what the fucking idiot segment, is because I have a problem with headline culture, period. Because mm. we all know niggas don't read. My daddy would always say, if you want to hide something from a black person, put it in a motherfucking book. book. Yeah. Well, you know, he used to say nigga. I don't want to say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to hide something from a nigga, put, put it, it in, in a fucking book. book. Nowadays, right. people see this headline and they just retweet, 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 retweet. Right. They don't read the details. The details of this situation is basically the police say it's going to be a rain check. We're going to detain well, yeah, you. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We're going to get your name. We're going to get your motherfucking address. And you're going to have a warrant that we yeah. will cash in at a later fucking date. Right. Yep. It's Absolutely. not the purge. You're not going to be able to just get away with, with selling dope for so the next doing two weeks. With, uh, with, with, what was my man in The Wire? He did that shit. Remember? He the, sold the, dope on the block they, and all that they shit. Call, they called it Hamsterdam. 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 What was right. Hamsterdam? It was Remember, like a four block area. There's a block where you could sell drugs You could sell on. drugs and do whatever because they didn't want the statistics to go on the police precinct. They want to look yeah. like they was lowering crime. Exactly. So they allowed it for oh, four block yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I mean, seen that done before. I've yeah. seen that done in the city that shall remain named. That shit is a, that shit is a, a setup anyway, man. It's like, I, honestly, even if you are a criminal... And if you're a career criminal, don't you shouldn't want to want to like you. You shouldn't want to say, "All right, you know what they said is cool." Like you should be smart. We lit. Yeah, <laughs> like you shouldn't. 
the uh, fuck is going on? But this out is not here. for the career criminals. This is for the the the, the, the idiots, the, the, the Philly, the future felons in Philly. The future, mm. the, future. the young, the say young, that three times. The, right. the future felons in Philly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the young ones who want to get into a life of crime. Mm. Let me test it dead, out. But now <laughs> they feel like they got that opportunity. They got that shot, and people were mad at me for even reposting that. But I'm like, yo, you can't be mad at me. He's reposting with the white man, Steve uh. Keely. Right, what he put said. Put in his tweet. Uh, and the reason I, th- I got to put Steve Keely in the what a fucking idiot is because you can't just leave out that fine detail. Now, he did put out a second tweet that mm-hmm. said the, awar- the, the the warrants will be cashed in later. But right. you got to put that I in the first say, one. Yeah, you that, that's that's, that, that's yeah. no way going to be as viral as the first one. Nobody yeah, he, sees the second one. Because that's all we saw was that. Nobody sees when the they, second yeah, one. Yeah, they that's all they showed was that. And, and, and positively brilliant, I got to say the student who, um, who, who got expelled was suspended for selling squirts of hand sanitizer to students. <laughs> I respect your hustle. Oh man, that wasn't my hustle, kids. <laughs> I respect your yeah, like, what did I teach you? Yeah, for real. Like, listen, man. Like I, I'm not knocking no kids. Supply and demand. To I'm right. trying to figure out what did he do wrong. Like what is the yeah. what is the the, the the jurisdiction at the school, the rule at the school that he broke? Yeah. Hey man, sticky fingers said a long time young ago. Young entrepreneur. Shit, they gonna get it from somebody. I would rather it be me. That's y'all never <laughs> y'all never hustled in high school. Drugs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Statue so of limitations. Yeah, yeah. Off. No, you never sold candy or nothing. <laughs> oh no, no. Listen, now nah, you know what I did do one time. Like when I was in like in the eighth grade, I stole like two boxes of the of the, of the fundraiser candy. Uh, and uh, I, I did sell them shits. I definitely go. sold them. It was sixty dollars a box. That was a hundred twenty dollars yeah. all profit. That's what I'm saying. That's what I used to. I used to sell candy. Yeah, you know what I'm I never. Candy? Yeah, because you want to know why? Like, see, kids now. And we we from the generation that niggas just making funny like you get celebrated for selling drugs, but if you were selling candy, niggas hey, be joking the on fuck you. Out like, of here, candy this man. nigga sell Skittles <laughs> on the train. They would have laughed at us for that. For real? What? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Fuck out of here, but candy if, man. If, if, if we from the sell crack era. If you was selling crack, then that was you know cool. Me? Like it's fucked up, but that's just how it was going. I remember in middle school, this dude used to come. Um, his his name was Oran. Rest in peace, to Oran. And he used to uh, bring forty ounces to school. Smart. Smart. Yeah, he would charge. He would charge. I mean, now if you think about it now, it's the most you know best way to spread coronavirus. But he used to charge like a dollar, and you would be able to take a sip a of the, the, the sip? forty. Oh wow! So he bring like wow. two or three forties, and it sound like a person selling dippers, man. But we, we would all be on the playground passing that shit around, and it'd be like a dollar, a dollar, a dollar, a dollar. He then made twenty dollars over two forties. Over two forties, that's crazy. He made twenty dollars and spread. First time, I, first time me and my man started selling weed, we used to put uh, Dutchess on the on the on the on the nickel bags. We used to sell it with it. We used to give you a Dutch for free. Smart. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, because we just had a line on how to get the Dutch masters. Like, you know what I mean? So, so you would be the best drug dealer at a time like this. Because if you stuck in the house with coronavirus and you like, yo. Oh, the drug no delivery services is making. It's, niggas is not stopping that. The drug delivery like, services is flourishing right now. Well, guess what? I would like to go on record to say that me and Hovain are no, not no, involved yeah, in any exactly. type of street activity. <laughs> Ever. And that, mm-hmm. Right. I'm just speaking all off of uh, hearsay. Hearsay. And um, documentaries I've watched. I don't know nothing about selling drugs. But Vice. I'm just saying it's like, right now would be the perfect time to kick your game up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Niggas can't leave the crib. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to take this time and positively brilliant um, to salute the good brother Wayno and salute the good brother Academics oh. for being two positively brilliant individuals. Because um, I don't think you, that man. we celebrate the success of everyday struggle mm. enough. Thank you. You know, uh, a lot of people... Thought everyday struggle was gonna fall off after Joseph left, yeah. um, but I think that what what people what people didn't take into consideration mm-hmm. was the fan base that academics had. Right. Actually, was Ak was here, so I could tell him because I, I called academics the other night and mm-hmm. I, I I told him this because you know I'm I'm a celebrator. You know what I'm saying I like to celebrate people. 100%. I like to right. I like to give. I don't like to talk behind people back because you know you always talk behind people back when it's some. Some foul shit to say. Yeah. So when we when people are talking good, when we're having positive conversations about yeah. people, I wanna I wanna say that to him. So I actually called him to tell him that. But it's like, yo, Ak had a fan base before he got on Everyday Scrub. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, he had built something great because of social media. Both of y'all work at labels. Y'all know what what Ak does on social media. Labels, corporations kill for that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. no, yeah. They and, they, they, and they pay for it. And they yes, pay real for engagement. It. You know what I mean? The YouTube yes, following engagement. that he's built, yeah. and then him being. Him being actually the first hip hop blog on Instagram, what Act Act yeah. followed, what Baller Alert and Shade Room started doing, mm-hmm. and so Act started doing it with hip hop. Like TMZ didn't do that well. World Star started to do it a little bit yeah. on Instagram, but they but all Act, following his lead. Yeah, everybody's yes. following him now. Like, yes. that type of shit. So Which I, I think, appreciate that. I right? think when people, you know, when 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 Joe left, they was like, okay, you know, everyday struggles gonna be a rap. Y'all been on for what? 
I've been on there for two years now. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, yeah, like, for yeah, I've been on there for two years myself. They're going to have to pay you to shut up. they going to have to pay me to shut up. Come on, <laughs> oh, you know me. So the show is almost three years old because Joe was on there for like six, seven months. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, then uh, I think Star came for a little bit. Yeah. And then Wayno. And I think the parent of Wayno and Ack is a great parent just because, you know, I think sometimes Joe Button overpowered Ack in mm -hmm. the conversation and probably didn't respect him mm -hmm. enough to actually listen to some of the stuff that was coming out of his mouth. Wayno respects act, but Wayno respects everybody. So he respects people enough to listen. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and Wayno has a great POV on, of things and he's got his own experiences yeah. in the industry and shit. So it makes for a great balance. But I just don't think that, you know, we, we celebrate uh, everyday struggle as a, a platform enough. That shit is, a, that shit is that, an industry standard. When people roll out their album, it's part of their plan. Yeah, no yeah. I mean, yo, you exactly. know what? And y'all know me. Way before a everyday struggle even existed, I was just trying to figure out what my next thing was going to be. You know, the management shit worked for me and all that. But it's like, for me, this shit kind of fell into my lap. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? This is nothing that I worked like worked to really get. And I, I don't say that to minimize it. I know it's a lot of people that fucking went to, uh, what's the name? Went to school for communications yeah, and all of that. And I even seen like a, a lot of people from back in the day that do interviews and all that. When I first got on there saying all types of shit about me, like, who is this nigga? <laughs> Uh, what does this nigga do? Who does he know? What what has he done? And it's like, I, I get it, but at the same time, it's like, I felt like with Everyday Struggle, I was thrown into the ocean and I had to swim the shore as far mm -hmm. as learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've always been open as to learning. Like, I asked Charlemagne one day, like, I text him, like, yo, bro, I'm trying to learn how to, he's like, nigga, you're doing it. Like, just keep going. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't really trip off people not celebrating it like that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I love what I'm doing. Like, that shit is the most fun part of my day. Even with academics, it's like, I think a lot of people they talk shit about academics because he don't post their shit. That, like, that, that's what it really boils down to. And if they really sat down and met the nigga, they'd know how intelligent he is. He's yeah. very smart, dude. Yeah. Ack is one of the most um, interesting stories I've seen in hip-hop media, you know, since I've been doing it, only because, like, there was a point where nobody took him serious. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then there was the point where everybody hated him. Right. Mm -hmm. And now it's to the point where they need them. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, you, <laughs> you can't, can't I mean? get away from them. Like, no, you, like, you need them, you know? And and, and he's still Ack at the end of the day. I don't yeah. even think Ack has quite figured out what to do with Ack yet. Yo, nah, he's, nah, listen, let me tell you one thing, bro. Like, he has, he has tons of great ideas, but I be telling him just more shit about him just being more present. Because his, and I understand it, like, he don't give a fuck about being social with none of these people because he built himself. You know online. Saying? Online. Yeah. So it's like, he don't have to leave the house and he can still make bread. You know what uh, I mean? And, and he's doing very good. So it's like, I, I just be telling him like, yo, bro, if you if, if you met a quarter of the people that really fuck with you, it'd take you to another level. And he understands that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he understands that. He's he's making a, a lot of new content, a lot of new different ideas. Like like I said, I learn from him every day and vice versa. Like, we trade off on shit as far as like giving each other information. The you funniest shit, mm -hmm. if you really know Wayno and you watch the show, you watch how he check him subtly. <laughs> like if you yeah. know Wayno and you J watch how he look at Jada Kiss said that I be Billy D Williams in this shit. Like he said, yo, you be, <laughs> smooth game. He's like, you be, but but you know what the thing is? Is this? It's like all right. Even when Joe left for myself, I thought it wasn't going to last. You know, too long because I didn't know what the next phase was going to be. But my thing is this, man. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to be. Are yelling at a nigga to argue with you. I ain't gotta yell at you to argue with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so my biggest thing you hear with that Joe Button, <laughs> whatever. But my, Yo, my I, I like when Joe used to yell at him because Joe funny. he was I'm just, passionate about what he was saying, and a lot of times he was right. Yeah, he, he was, was right about stuff. But I'm just saying for for myself, bro. Like for me, it's like I'm not. We do that shit mad early in the morning. <laughs> like we doing that like we doing that shit <laughs> niggas don't understand bro no way we are, yeah, bro I'm not doing that shit 7 at 8.30 in the morning getting out of and for me that's just not who I am as a person yeah, yeah, yeah. even for, even if I if I have altercation I'm not going I'm not going to be trying to like it's either we doing something or not so yeah. for me I looked at with academics like how I deal with academics I just talk to them you know what I mean, I talk to him and we have our little spats here and there, but I talk to him. Yeah, you know messaging saying? messaging is very important, right? I think um, learning how to communicate, knowing how to communicate is very important, you yeah. know? And I think people got different different ways of communicating. Like, I, I didn't always communicate, you know, the way that I do now. But back in the day, I didn't communicate the same way. Yeah, you know what I'm either. saying? Yeah. And, 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 and what I realized now is the way I communicate now, it, it, it resonates more, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you're actually saying something, you don't want that message to be missed. Right, and right, sometimes right. the message will be missed 
If you like, oh shit, look at him, yo, he's sunning dude, he's checking dude, he's yelling at dude, you get caught up in that instead of what the person is actually saying. This this generation doesn't deal with nuance well, bro. We don't yeah, dig, we don't dig deep enough. We you, all we see is the surface of something. You know what I'd be confused about, Charlemagne? Like the certain words that people use. Checking, pressing, word, word, word. sunning. I don't know where everybody else come from. I just know that when a nigga press you, it means it's something different, totally right? different. Yeah, it's, it's or when totally a nigga different. check you, it means something totally different. Yeah. So it's like, I don't even be looking at it in that sense. And then like, people that's fans, they they view it a certain way. It's like, like when I had this shit with Soldier Boy, you know what I mean? Like, everybody was like, oh, why, why didn't you... Why didn't you get up and fight him? It's like, fam. And my job? <laughs> this the thing. Niggas want niggas want to gas you to do something stupid to call you stupid. Yep. Yes. So if I would have got up and me and Soldier Boy would have had a physical altercation, no matter who gets the best of who, I yeah, I get to go viral and all of that. But then, it, it, you know what it becomes? Complex comes to me and say, yo, you know, can't do we can't no do more. this no more. Right then they go, where do I get the realest nigga awards? Like nigga, that's what I'm saying. People would gas you up to do something stupid to call you stupid. And if you got the best of Soldier Boy, they'd have been like, ah, oh, bro, I mean, Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah. Bro, Soulja Boy? but I'm just saying, bro, I made it. Swing on Gucci. Yo, I like, made it past thirty. <laughs> I made it past thirty years old without a felony. That shit is not easy. You, you think I'm a, I'm gonna trick myself out of my situation? That I don't know if people think like that when it comes to what we doing. You people, know what I'm saying, but, pe people really think that what they say matters or what they dictate. Like somebody a tweet or. Instagram. Yeah, they be like, yo, that's why I don't understand the whole came for you. Oh, like, like, <laughs> like, oh, when people say, oh, uh, they, 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 uh, they, uh, like, what do they call it on Twitter when everybody's clap stuff? Back. Not clapbacks. They say some shit like, like, came for you, but something like it. Oh, oh, don't come for me if I ain't sent for you. Like, all right, I could say something about Nikki or, or on the show, and then all the barbs is in my mentions. And they be like, oh, the barbs is on your ass. What do that mean? Yeah, like what yeah, do that yeah, even I'm mean? A real like, nigga. What, bro, I, I don't know if y'all niggas live I'll in the space. App. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. You could turn, I could turn it off and, and still live the same life I'm living. I don't know if people live with that social media shit where yeah, that's, like that's they everything. That shit, I just don't that get shit it. is their gateway into a reality that they don't have. So it's like I'm really living this shit. I'm, what you say don't affect me at all. I'll bro, turn this I'm shit not off. Supposed, I'm not I, I fit every statistical category of a black man in America to fail. High school dropout. Join gang, all this type of silly shit where I'm not supposed to make it. I be like, I be saying to myself, like, though, I get paid to do shit that I Word love. Up. You know how great life is. Word up. Like, so, so all these little things that people think mean a difference to you, as far as like what they may say or how they may just, I don't give a fuck about what I say. Everything is strategic, man. Don't yeah. let temporary feelings, you know, cause you to make something that's going to be a permanent, de permanent decision. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Don't let temporary feelings. Make you make a permanent decision. Fool me once. Can't I think get I'm fooled saying, again. I think I'm saying that, right? <laughs> yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you're in the studio with Fredro Starr and he calling you pussy and a bitch and all of this and that, I ain't got no reason to turn up on Fredro. You know what I'm saying? If you don't put his hands on me, we good. Yeah. That's fine. I, that's the, all that word shit don't matter to me that at all. That shit don't mean nothing. I didn't, yo, I, listen, I feel like a veteran. I am a veteran out of this motherfucker, but I didn't, I done been, been, been almost jumped in front of the radio station. I'm not going to turn around and try to play tough guy with five people. Bro, this shit don't... This Social don't, distancing. I was doing that shit before. <laughs> was popular. That's why I ran. Bro, I was around, I was around State Property and Beanie Siegel and their heyday. None of these niggas is tough. I, I'm talking about right now, the way how these niggas be trying to pertain, act like they... T and it's not even cool to be tough. Oh, no, like, that's you, put, you put a comma there. Cool. cool. People will take that clip and it, say, "Oh, nobody." Wait, no, wait, no. Say, I was around state property. Them niggas, none of these niggas is tough. Oh yeah, and I'm you talking about that. Yeah, Come on, what I, what I mean by that? Compared niggas. to state property, these niggas now ain't tough. They not, and 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 I'm not <laughs> even compared. Right, you 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 summarize that perfectly. Yes. I'm just saying it's like, bro, it, it, being in the, being in that time was some of the dangerous times of my life, and I'm not saying that as a bragging point. I'm just saying it's like I be looking at it like, why is everybody now all of a sudden? No, everybody's tough though. Me and my, one of my homies was talking <sighs> about that, like just on social media, the music industry. Everybody's a gangster. Everybody's a killer. Everybody's a gang member. Man, go have fun and have <laughs> live fun, life. Man. Like, what is? I just don't get it. People man. don't really know what life is about. Take like, it. we come from that. I yeah, come bro, from. Like, I come from poverty streets for the real. So to make it here, like, I'm gonna fuck it up for what? For you? Yeah. Who's my dude, Young Chris? Man, I saw him here. Uh, he's the oh, yeah, finest. He's diversifying his portfolio. He sent me this shit. Come you see this shit? <laughs> this nigga said this is Chris. I was dying. This nigga really looked like Chris, though. He just oh, like young man. Chris, man. You gonna add it to the video? Hold on, yeah, hold that it up shit to the is camera. hilarious, man. This dude looked just like young Chris, man. I said, God damn, young Chris out here diversifying his portfolio. Look. <laughs> Don't that look like young Chris?
<laughs> Selling life insurance or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's tears, bro. Like Ooh, if you glance, that shit OD look, look like Chris. Because like Chris, Chris got pictures of him wearing suits and shit like that too. Like that looks like him OD. All right, now before we go deep into our bucket dive, I want to tell you about Tushy. Hove, Wayne, I got a question for y'all. Do you have buttholes? If you do, then this ad's for you. <laughs> All right? Listen, let's be honest. The biggest scam right now going on in this world is toilet paper. Okay? That's the biggest scam. If you got poo on your arm, would you wipe it off with dry paper or would you wash it with water? All you people that's running to the store and taking all the, the toilet paper out of the fucking, off the aisles, off the shelves, you really need to think about this, okay? If you wouldn't wipe your butthole with dry paper, Okay, then why are you wiping it with toilet paper? So what I'm doing right now is introducing you to the latest in butt cleaning technology. You want to know what that butt cleaning technology is? Water, nigga. All right. Get with the program and clean your butthole with a bidet. Y'all don't got bidets in the crib? Hell no. Y'all ain't got no bidet? I don't know. Y'all can't be that homophobic where you don't like a little water squirted up your ass. Okay. Well, that's that's the, 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 the seat like the Japan. Like yes, the man. Yes. I ain't got that enough money for that. Yeah. <laughs> next shit, next real. Oh, look, right. I'm glad both of y'all said that because for years, bidets have been available but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. The Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize the blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes that everybody, you need this right now because you can't find no toilet paper because everybody's buying toilet paper because of the coronavirus. Okay? Hello, Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water. Forget this, $79. I promise you if it was $69, this would have been perfect. Okay? It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. We need this right now. The Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few months because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe it all. Even the best two-ply just can't cut it when it comes to a hands-free poop experience. Look, mom, no hands. Ditch paper products and uncomfortable chafing when you switch to the soothing, cleansing scream of water from a Hello Tushy bidet attachment. And every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. I don't see how you don't need this in your life. You on social media and you see that toilet paper is is non-existent right now because everybody's buying it for whatever reason. But right now you can join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers and have a clean butthole. Who doesn't want a clean butthole? Go to hellotushy.com slash idiots to get 10% off. This is a special offer for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash idiots for 10% off. That's hellotushy.com slash idiots. I might have to put Hello Tushy in the Positively Brilliant segment because the fact that y'all are advertising this right now in the midst of a toilet paper, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Crisis. With toilet paper is just disappearing everywhere. For whatever reason, people are buying toilet paper. For y'all to advertise this right now, fucking genius. HelloTushy.com slash idiots. Let's get back to the show. Nah, but the communication is important. Um, Very. That's why I, uh, my, my, my deep dive today, I want the deep dive to be uh, J Electronica's album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A written testimony, right? Hit the drop. Goes deep, deep, deep. Messaging is important, right? Because right. we was all—I'm sure we all saw uh, Joe Budden yesterday and Jay Electronica, Electronica going back and forth on Twitter. And um, I, I listened to what Joe Budden had to say about Jay Electronica's album, and he's not wrong at all. But the mess is messaging. It's not what you say; it's how you say it. Your word is bomb. I'm not responsible for how you perceive my information. I, I dole out though, because yeah, I can say something, right? and two people could perceive it two, two different, different ways, totally different right? ways. Yeah, but if especially you say somebody who's insecure, or somebody you be talk, I could be talking to you who's secure in itself. Mm -hmm. I could be talking to somebody who's insecure, and I can say the same exact thing, the same exact way. You might take it the way you take it. Yeah. I'm not responsible for how you perceive what I'm saying. Yeah, Should right, artists man. be that sensitive at no. people's opinions about their music? No. I mean, once you create it and put it out, yeah. it's, on, it's for the public to say, nobody's going to love your shit all the time. Now, JLX Baby Mother, Queen Erica Badu said some real shit one time. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Right. But why do we allow certain people's opinions to bother us? Is it because of the platforms it's that we own? the platforms because you know, like, I mean, Let's, let's keep it 100, man. You know when when you got a certain type of platform. And, and I just say, like, Joe. Like, Joe, 
you know how he is with music. I think the good part about Joe is that he's very critical about music because he cares about music. Yeah. But the way he delivers it sometimes, it do make people feel away. And you can't, like, you, you, you you're right. I could say something to you and you, and both of y'all could feel away. But if I say it with a certain type of aggression, or I say it with certain type of verbiage, or I say it in certain type of ways, you you naturally might feel a way about it. If I if I tweet out I never got absolutely mopped around on my own project <laughs> at me, not Rory. First of all, I hate when niggas say at them. Like that's what is that? <laughs> like, adding them is nothing. Like actually, say it to my face is what. I guess add is to say it to my face of so, social media. Yeah. But he said, I never got absolutely mopped around on my own project. And then Joe said, I took you off yours. And it's a whole mixtape now. It's disrespectful <laughs> to say I took you off. I just want what's the point in doing that? That's all I'm saying. You can give your opinion about the album and say the exact same things. Because fr- when I first heard the album, we talked about it in the group chat. Yeah. I got on Breakfast Club the next day. I said, yo. Jay washed Jay Electronica, right? But when I go back and listen to it, I don't think it's a washing. It's not a mop up. Okay, it's, it's a reason for this, right? Jay Electronica is a dope rapper. Yes, we know that he's he's a great rapper. I love his messaging. You know, he speaks my language. You know, I walk around with the honorable Elijah Muhammad piece on mm-hmm. right. all the time. So I'm big on the lessons. I'm big right. on the NOI. So his his music hits hits me a little bit different. Right. But let's be clear when we talking about. Jay Electronica getting mopped up on his project. He's on his project with the greatest rapper of all time. It's yeah. like it's like being on the court with the greatest basketball player of all time. Jo- if, if Jordan might score 30, but that don't mean Scotty didn't score 25. Right now, if you got to shoot with Michael Jordan, I'm pretty sure he can outshoot most people who play basketball every I'm day. Saying. If you're just talking free throws and yes. shit. So it's like, yeah, he's on a he's on a the the album with the greatest nigga ever. Absolutely, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's absolutely. like, what you exp- but I don't know, man. I think people were wanting more from Jay Electronica because it was a ten year hiatus. Right. So for him to come back with a mixtape and it, the first voice you hear is Hove. Right. It's the it's, it's the honorable a lot. It's the it's Farrakhan. Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yeah, right. And then the next voice you hear is Hove. But so I can understand thing. some mm-hmm. people being a little like. But keep in mind. All this, even all this journalist stuff that Joe doing now, you gotta remember he was a rapper for longer, yeah. and now he's get like Joe used to give his opinions on Twitter all the time. Absolutely, that's how he built a, a big fan base through social media. But now his opinion is his voice. So a lot of the things that he probably didn't get a chance to say, or I mean, get, we didn't get a chance to hear him say before, he can just freely say now. Yeah. I'm not. And he's being critical as a rapper more than a journalist. I think. And if you listen, he still bigged him up. He say, I'm separating this. Nobody I'm, hears that. That goes he, back to my yeah, original he, point. He say, right? yo, I'm still super happy for him putting out the joint. Nobody hears that. I'm still uh, celebrating the fact that he finally got one out. Congrats and all that, but I, I want him more. That. You know that, what I'm saying? That gets lost, ho. Yeah, that, that gets lost. lost. The yelling and the, the, the name calling. And by the way, I'm not, if that's, that's what Joe... Joe does. My only issue is keep that same energy when you're sitting face to face with Jay Electronica. <laughs> don't don't backtrack. You know what I mean? I want to see them veins popping out. I want you to take the shirt off. I want the wife beater on. I want you yelling and screaming at Joe. I mean at Jay, telling Jay the same way you feel about his project. You know when he's when he's around you. But yeah. but forget, forget Joe. I want to talk about this album, right? Mm-hmm. A written testimony. It what Hove said is absolutely right. If your criticism is after 10 years, you wanted more Jay Electronica. I can understand why you're upset. It's a 39-minute project. I think he raps for like 13, 14 minutes mm. out of the whole 39-minute project. The rest is Hove and instrumentals playing and, you know, skits. I can understand that. But when you say he got washed on this project, that's not fair. Yeah, He's barring fair. people up on this shit, bro. But it's when you fair. do an album, when you do a song, an album with somebody, you open yourself up to that comparison. Yeah, you yes. put yourself you know in a position. Saying? Yes. But, you know but the, my only problem with Jay Electronica is this, bro. I accept you how I met you. You 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 started off with the Just Blaze shit. That's what made everybody fuck with you. Yeah. Exhibit yeah. B and Exhibit C and, yeah. and in the Demo skin and all all the like hidden songs we was trying to find. This is down the third. There's no Just Blaze, right? Which is whack. Which 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 I don't like. But but not only that, I, as much as I love Jay Z, I didn't want to hear Jay Z. A, a Jay Z Jay Electronica album. I wanted to hear Jay Electronica. Like, I, that's what I really now want I want a Jay Z album. Yeah, yeah right. I'm, I'm not gonna ever say I don't want to hear Jay. I mean, come on, bro. I, I mean, uh, I love I, hearing from Hope because Hope always lets us know where he's at in his life. 
Yeah. At the, at the moment. You know what I mean? Like, that's cool, but come on, bro. I wanted to hit Jayla. It's been 10 years. It's been, been 10 stop. years. I've been was like, all right, we never get in it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've been... Like, detox never came. Like, yeah. that shit is out of our minds now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I never I, rated Jay Electronica like that, though. Nah, Exhibit C, it was a special time. He used to be in New York. Like, we was outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 08, 09. He was, 172, he used to be at Dame shit. He was everywhere, so we got to really interface with him. You yeah. really, Hell, Angela, you used to manage yeah, him. Yeah, yeah that's so, right. so it was like, we had a different type of expectation, because it was like, we've been, we championed him. I, li I, I liked Exhibit C, but I never looked, I never... Jay was never one of the guys. I'm like, yo, he's one of the greatest rappers of all time. I never, I never saw that. I just like, mm. once again, I liked him because of his subject matter. Yeah, I loved him because he was like Farrakhan with a microphone, like the same messages that the honorable yeah. minister, uh, minister Louis Farrakhan was trying to convey through speeches. Right. Jay was actually doing in his music. Right, and I mean, I, he never had his, he never had an opportunity to be the greatest of all time, and then because he didn't put out a body of work. But there was point, a point in time where we did look at him as a, a, a nigga that's like. All right, he's gonna fix fix these little bit of glitches in the matrix. The nigga's an anomaly. Like he he comes from New Orleans. He raps like that. You never see him. He's like an alien. Like you you never hear the him from trial. him. It was just, yeah, it was, it's, it's so much shit about yeah. him that made him interesting. That's what we wanted to hear. Yeah, that's what I said in the group I, I, chat. I said after ten years of of being gone, you didn't give us none of that. What happened in those ten years? Yeah, what happened on your not, journey? I learned right. more. I learned more to him. And exhibit C, then I learned on his whole album. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that's his purpose, though. I think his purpose Why? is to give us these teachings. I really do. And I, I, I agree with you. I think the mystery around him has always been bigger than his music. Yeah. You know, but I think that his purpose is to give us these lessons. First of all, if, if you've never read Message to the Black Man by the, by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, mm. do that. Read that twice. Okay. And then go listen to a written testimony. Okay. Because there's just certain things that he's talking about that's, that's going to hit different. And, but the thing is, and I, I get that, but that's not everybody's, like, that's not everybody's uh, mission to to, <laughs> to to be able to read that. N niggas just that's want true. music sometimes. That's, 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 that's going to be 5% of people that do that. Yeah, for 85% right. is that, 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 that. That goes back to what I said about messaging. Because, yeah. like, he might be talking over people's heads because yeah, he's like, speaking about things that people don't know about. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And that's, and I'm, I'm not, not, like, the thing is, is that, I, I even hit Yeah about it. I'm happy with the album, but we all get to be selfish as fans. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. I get I get to be selfish as yeah, a fan. I want what I, I want. I, I get to be I, yeah, like I get to be able to say like it's not like we got video games and we could trade niggas and, and do the <laughs> shit that we want to do <laughs> and play fantasy rap. I wanna hear Jay Electronica for 10 songs by itself and one J feature or two. I don't want to hear them going back and forth. And like, yeah, I love to hear Jay, but it's like uh, Jay-Z, but at the same time it's like Bro, I was so ten years. We got to hear him with 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 Jay Z and then like it's a cheat code. I don't know, bro. It's a cheat code. I, I, like I he know. said in the album, he was like basically he said like, "Well, I'm going hard doing these things just so you could di dissect me and yeah, break it down." Said, said, yeah, that's what mirror, artists do. Flaws. That's yeah. what art is. If yeah. not, keep that shit in your headphones. Yeah, bro. You I, put the shit out to be discussed, yeah. to Yo, be praised, you to you be. Know what I learned, Charlamagne, and I learned this by just by doing media, bro. You can't stop nobody from saying nothing. But, that's what, but what yeah, Hov is saying is true. It's art, right? Yeah, it's art. So when you, and not when you are when you're a public figure, but yeah. definitely when it's art. When, when you put art. something out to the world, like JLX said on the album, he said, you know, I'm I'm trying to squeeze out bars just for y'all to pick me apart. Yes, yes nigga. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, black man. You know that. <laughs> yes, they've been doing it the whole for years. Yeah. They've been doing it the 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 the. the I can't even Nas anybody any great lyricist Kendrick this yeah. is what we do and, and I still feel like it's special I still feel like it's a special moment but it's at the a, same it's time a, it's, it's a good vibe it's, it's a, a good vibe it, it's, a, it's a moment but at the same time I'm just like can we talk about what uh, we like about the album absolutely cause yeah. that's the problem I think everybody yeah, yeah. This, but that's the era we live in though right yeah it is we automatically talk about what we don't so, like yeah, yeah. so what we do like gets lost yeah. I think it's dope just because he's giving out them teachings man and it's like Yo, he's really barred up. I was looking at this, this bar today, and, and Chance the Rapper put out a great tweet, which is absolutely true. Mm. This is what Rap Genius was made for. Yeah, right. shout out to Rob Markman. Shout out to Rob Markman. Mark, Family. Th this right is what Rap Genius is made for. You absolutely. can go on Rap Genius and see what the fuck he's talking about. When he said, like, all praises due to Allah, subhanu hawata Allah, whatever it was. That means yeah. glory, to, glory be to yeah, Allah, to glory high. be to him, Absolutely. the most high. You know what I'm saying? Then he says, I put on for my nation like I'm King T'Challa, crushing the Oyibo. Mm. You know what the Oyibo is? White people yeah, yeah. that try to bring wahala, trouble. Mm. So it's like when you know these things, when you know what some of this stuff means, it hits it a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It hits a little bit different. I love Ezekiel's will. I love Ezekiel's will too. He, he got busy on that. He yeah, got busy he got on busy. that. I love I, I love the fact that he's the first person to get Jay on an Alchemist beat. 
You know, like that's that's, that's, that's that never in the story. Never in the story. Oh my god! Like Alchemist, I mean, like Alchemist just for so I, I feel like Alchemist don't get the credit he deserves as a all. fucking producer. At he's all. one of the greatest to ever do it, and yep. he's never worked with Jay. You know, and that was because you know Mob Deep affiliation. I Ho feel like hopefully we get more of that. Yeah. I want to I want to hear Jay on the Derringer beat too. But that would be insane. Never yeah. in the story was dope. What was the balls on Never in the story? Is that the one where he's like, um, damn, I can't remember what Never in the story was. Never in the story is hard. Hold on, let me pull up the never balls. Never in the story is the, the one story. With, with drink. No, that's not the one with drink. No, that's no, Ezekiel's well. Yeah, that's Ezekiel's well. Hold on, let me pull up some balls from Never in the story. No, but there's a lot of good shit on there. The last song on there is crazy. The shit that All they recorded the night Kobe died. Mm, yeah. Never in the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard the tale of the noblest? Oh, yeah, yeah. When he was like, his uptown smile was gold like a Frankie Beverly Day. His favorite song from Prince was not Raspberry Beret. Yeah. That was a dope tune. That's, yeah. that's actually one of the... Um, one of the one of the better verses Electronica had on this shit, but Jay still killed him. Yeah, because Jay not, came with the it's a miracle. But he, born he, with killed, he got features. Jay on the joint when he be like, "I'm trying to catch a body." That that joint. Yeah. He, like, he, I'm trying to catch a body. Which one was that? I think that's Ezekiel's will. He, oh, he bodied Ezekiel's will. Yeah, he be like, he like whatever niggas want to do, I'm I'm into like you know, all that shit. He he got Jay on that, but it's hard to have a better verse than Jay. Like, Bro, it's not many people that can say that. Never in the story. Maybe Jason, I'm a miracle two or born. three in their life. Yeah, when Imperial Maybe. features, I'm a page turner, sage burner, Santeria. It's this last part where he goes. Uh, neither two can be used to fix our defects. P.S. We born perfect. Fuck all the B.S. Everybody want to be us for real. We just got to see us. Yeah. Inshallah. God damn. <laughs> like, you can't do that to J. Electronica and compare him even. And I get it. That's what we do. It's the same mm -hmm. way we compare everybody. If Kendrick and Drake come out with albums in the same year, we comparing them to. Yeah. If Cardi and Nicki are the two hot female rappers, we comparing man, them to is hip hop. Man, it's but it's very like yo Jay Z is a different animal, man. Yeah, comparison is a thief of joy, but you open yeah. yourself up for comparison when you do an album with and, and somebody. It's, it's a reason yeah. why the word exists. You know what I mean? yeah, like, it's, it's, it's a reason why the word exists. You yeah. know? Shouldn't Jay Electronica get credit though because he produced five songs on the album? Yes, one hundred percent. Absolutely. And, and, and so yo, he the, sets the tone. Yeah. He inspired Jay Z to want to rap. Yeah. Uh. And one thing I really like about Jay rapping on Jay Z rapping on this is he's rapping. Ways we've never heard him before, like when yeah. he said lyrically, "I be Talib Kweli." Like I feel like that's he's, what he's, he's tapping that's into. That's what he at right now. Yeah, yeah. He's finally rapping the way he always wanted to rap. Yeah, when, and, when the same shit with the Talib Kweli line when he said, "Truthfully, I want to rap like Common Sense." I ain't yeah. five minutes rapping like Common Sense. Yeah. Like that, he's finally rapping the way he wants to rap. Right, and that's dope. Yeah, I think that's dope. Mm -hmm. And and I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not mad at the album at all, but I do like yeah, nigga. You Exhibit C is a moment. Like, that shit is a moment in hip-hop. That's the benchmark that we judging him by. And yeah. there was none of that type of rapping on his tape. I don't believe that, though. That's what I'm going to tell you why it's not. I'm going to tell you why it's not. Because the production, the, it's not it the is. same. It's, wait, wait, wait. That's all it is. The teachings is in there, right? The teachings is in there. And, he ain't got that lessons, Just Blaze beat. He ain't got the beat. That's, the only, That's all it but is. But that goes into the, the record. Like, that goes into making a record. You, you, that, it's just a little bit, I won't even say disappointing, because I don't know where what Jay happened, Electronica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also heard that Jay Electronica is the nigga that he could be sitting in his room and he fucking teleports and disappears. You don't see him for a year. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I can't imagine what Just Blaze has tried to go through trying to get this nigga to record. Just Blaze got a whole Jay Electronica of album. That's he a does. fact. Yeah. Of course. He Just got Blaze, whole Jay Z albums. Just Blaze got a whole Jay Electronica album that for whatever reason never came out. I heard that there's a record called um, Malcolm Soapbox that is absolutely phenomenal. And you know, I think that I, I do. I feel bad that Just Blaze isn't on this project because Just Blaze is giving Jay Z some of his greatest records, Absolutely. and he definitely gave Jay Electronica some of his greatest records. So I, I think it's a story behind why Just Blaze isn't on it, and the fact you got a whole Jay Electronica project. Like there's joints that you got. That are phenomenal from Jay Electronica. So why didn't those make the cut? I'm thinking that this isn't. This is why I don't want to go too hard on Jay Electronica because I don't think it's warranted. Yeah. I think Jay Electronica showed up on this project. Right. Everybody acting like this isn't the same Jay Electronica we used to no, hear back in the day. One, yeah. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. The yeah. only difference between Exhibit Minus B. Just Blaze. That's it. Yeah, mine is just Blaze. It. It's the but it's the production. That's hard. Bro, I'm about to say when Just Blaze yeah, was a big. That's hard, yo. Because I mean, and realistically, it's only eight songs. Cause Shiny Suit Theory was out, and there's one skit. I mean, one track that's intro, all yeah. uh, the intro that's all production. It's really eight songs. Wasn't it Eternal? Wasn't it Etern uh, Act One? What? what remember that Jay Electronica project, Eternal Eternal Sunshine? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act One. I remember that. Yeah, what yeah. were you saying about it? That's a project. That was like what four songs? No, he had a fucking he had oh, a drink that was like. I don't know, because people was making... It, it was, this is what I'm saying. The nigga was a, was a hustle. Yeah, so yeah. niggas was putting together anything they could find and make it yeah. in the tapes. Because I got an act one. I had an act one at the time when it was on black... The, the fucking... Um, 
the touchscreen Blackberry when we was all wow. on BBM that was like 20 something tracks of Jay Electronica rapping for a minute or you know how you say that word did did uh did triple did? Mean? Not dick, what? nigga. I ain't say that. <laughs> you better not get him started. You know how he play. You know how he. I said D I T. Go C came in there. I don't know how to say the word, but it's, it's something that they the treplamine or some shit like that. It's I don't a, know. It's a um. Hold on, let me look it up real quick. The treptamine dichotomy? No, 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 no. It's a, it's a word I can't. I don't know how to uh, pronounce this word. What is it? What is it pertaining to? It's a song yo that he had. Pig, uh, uh, men with the men, pigs with the heads of men spit acid. You remember that shit? I don't remember. My third eye cloak. And a midget in the uh, a mini, a midget in a bonnet like a baby in a basset. With that oh, said, th- th- this I don't know how to say that shit. Though. Nigga, you know I don't know. How, how about to say, say that that shit. you asking him? That shit look like the shit that you read at the doctor's office when they trying yeah, to do but, your, but eyes, it's a, your it's eyesight a, test. It's like a, a it's like a um a diagnosis or some shit. But th- that's what I'm saying. The nigga had he had so many. It's drugs. the production like on on uh damn I can't remember what song that was when he just be like he's like uh I think it's the blinding. The blinding is dope with Hip Boy and Swiss. When he's like, um, you know the kingdom come, sir, the wheel inside. What he said? You know the kingdom come, sir, the wheel inside the wheel, a half a mile in circumference. It's the return of the Mahdi, the return of the Akis. Yeah. He said the return of, it says says, this is like Tupac Shakur spitting Flim and Paparazzi. Those are big barring the fuck up. He's barring up. up. But at the same time, like you said, a lot of this going to go over people's heads just by the context and then everybody the time Everybody got in. knowledge of self. Everybody, everybody don't have... True. And on mm-hmm. to, like, think about reasonable doubt, bro. It, like, you still could catch lines on reasonable 100%. doubt. 100%. Like, reasonable doubt came out when I was like 11, 12 years old. It's shit that Jay was saying that I'm like, oh, shit. Nigga, I, I, I just like, caught a line from 444. This one when, when they they, they said uh, we was talking about it when they was oh, like yeah, the Lawrence yeah. Taylor line when he said Tata jumped over Tata nigga, jumped he was over five, five six, six. Five, six yeah. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor fifty six when he He's jumped over the play on the field. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I just yeah. learned something new. Somebody, yeah. somebody sent us the picture. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. the Kobe Jigga man is Diesel when I lifted eight, eight up. up. Yeah, when, when Shaq I was picking up, I didn't know. I thought you talking about picking his thirty eight up. Nah man, listen, he got a lot of. That's why I say you should go read a message to the black man because it's like when he talks about the wheel inside the wheel a half a mile in circumference. That's the measurement of the wheel inside the wheel and he says the return of the Mahdi you know Mahdi is the uh, was the leaders with some leaders of Islam who would appear to restore peace and rid the world of evil and then he says the return of that's the crazy. Akis that's his that's brother yeah, that's... the return of the lost and found tribe of Shabazz you know what I'm saying so let me ask you a question uh, do y'all think he coming with another project or is it gonna be another 10 drums? if y'all don't scare him away who y'all <laughs> if y'all don't fucking scare him away <laughs> talk about I'm telling you you, you might scare you might scare the brother away like I want I want J, I want Jay Elect to know that I, I think that he 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 bought up on this project, but you know, yes, you did do yourself. First of all, it's only one wax song on the whole album. What song? Flux, Flux Capacitor. Capacitor. Flux that shit is yeah. garbage. That's I don't know the beat. Yeah, Law, the Good Brother Law, Guru, the Good Brother Guru. The guru. I don't know how y'all let that out the studio. <laughs> that shit is so off beat. Yeah, it is super off beat. Like I'm like, what the fuck? Like it, like it sounds. Cr- it's that like that shit. Maybe they were taking the maybe they were taking the Yeezus approach. You know what I mean? Nah. <laughs> you know how Yeezus, yeah. Like they was like, yo, it's distorted so that you nah. can really grasp it in. Nah, or whatever. that wow, wasn't it. That's and, then, and I never thought I would ever find myself skipping a track that has Jay Z and Jay Electronic. I skipped I skipped that record every time. Mm. That shit don't sound good in the car. Mm, that yeah. shit don't sound good in well, the headphones when you're working out. That shit ain't it, bro. I would like the, I would like Jay Electronic to know if he definitely sees this that I'm thankful. For him giving us something. Yes. You know yeah, what I mean? Because it's, you know, the the way things is going, man, and like we just so affected by so many like tragedies that happen, like by all of these young artists or even older artists that lose their lives tragically. I'm happy yeah. that he he's given a contribution for real. And, and you're gonna remember this album. This album came Absolutely. out during a global pandemic. This album yeah. came out at the height of the coronavirus, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I can, for, and, and I think for me, here we go. As soon as I start talking about corona, I'm about to start coughing. <laughs> here we go. This one, I was about to say something crazy because I was about to say, I think this album could be the kill for the coronavirus. <laughs> and Corona said, ho, 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 you hold up now. <laughs> All right, relax. But yes, man, I just think it's a dope-ass project. And 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 what what would y'all have done different if y'all were a and R's on it? I've just played. I've just made executive that's producer. It. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, it's nothing, I, it's nothing really. I, honestly, man, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, I love the Jay-Z shit, but I wanted, like I said, being a fan... Because I'm an A&R and executive and all that, I still got to take myself out of that and bring myself into what I love. No matter how much d- shit I'm doing business-wise, I don't yeah. forget how it felt when I used to open up an album. 
Yeah. Read the credits, listen to it for the first time. Call my friends and tell them to come over. We so, gotta listen to this shit. Yeah, we shit. gotta hear this shit. That was our social media or getting word, on your bike word, and word, going word. to your man crib and hearing it. So it's like, for me, I have my shit that I want personally, but I would have kept it the same if I could have did a Jay Electronica album. I just would have dumbed down on a lot of the Jay Z shit. Yeah, I would have did this album after Jay Electronica's album. I'm gonna be honest with you, Wayno. After hearing Jay Z on this album, the only feature I would not want Jay on is that whack ass flux capacitor. Everything else, Jay's verses. No, I want him on everything, but I'm just saying it's yeah. like you know those verses were necessary. Like I might he have kept some of records for his project. Yeah, for, I'm like, Yo, hold, let's hold this back for the whole project. Yeah, but I would I would have still did the album, but I would have did it after I did a Jay Electronica album the way I want to do a Jay Electronica. Executive produced by Just Blaze. Yeah, exactly. Because to me, this is an extension of four four four, right? Because like four 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 came at a very pivotal time in my life because it came out on my it came out the day after my birthday. I think I turned thirty nine that year, mm -hmm. and like. You know, we was on the roof, and I'm, we just celebrating life. It was me and DJ Samero and, and Wax. We just having a good time, like a bunch of my partners. You well, know. you did, we know. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. We're going to address that after the show. Oh, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll about it was that. a couple years ago. I don't uh, remember. Well, we was I, cool I, a couple years ago, too. Yeah, we've been yeah, cool yeah, for yeah, about a dime now. It, right? wasn't, yeah. no, it wasn't like a planned thing, no. no yeah. <laughs> He's it wasn't, dancing. It wasn't like a planned thing. so good. And so we was on there smoking cigars, and you was about to fly out the next day, and as I'm riding, listen to Oh, fly out the next day. He was, the way Ho was at, Ho was on some like real just black power embracing fatherhood yeah, embracing yeah. you know being a husband and you know just being a black man in this country and bossing up on some ownership yeah. shit which he's always been on but it was a soundtrack for me at that moment still remains a soundtrack for me now yeah. at this moment in my life when 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 the biggest thing I want to do is just continue to grow spiritually you know what I'm saying like practice mm. mindfulness in a real way that's why I'm so big on the mental health thing but it's just like you know when I'm when I'm trying to be as mentally healthy as possible and spiritually healthy as possible I needed this soundtrack right now mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit make you sharpen up on your lessons. Yeah. You know, it make you, you like, like, yo, I ain't read message to the black man in a minute. Let me go back and go back read message to the man. black man. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I walk around this honorable Elijah Muhammad piece on for a reason. Like, like, like Jay Electronica said on the album, he was like, yo, the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad, my backbone. Mm. So, yes, I agree that, yo, he might have went over heads with it. But isn't that what good rappers supposed to do? He can't yeah, enter his base. That's what he did. Like, yeah, uh, like, like, I'm, like, I'm, like a, a, a yo, somebody not running for president. None of that at all. Yeah, I, just, niggas just want to hear just Blaze beats. That's all. That's like, all. That, that, <laughs> I'm not the shit. Not trash. It's not whack. I don't feel like like Jay is fifty steps ahead of him. And even if people feel like he is, that's fucking Jay Z. You know what I mean? Like it was about thirty. He gave him yeah, yeah. He's, he's ahead. I'm saying he's ahead of him. Fifty. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm, he might be fifty steps. He might be fifty ahead steps ahead of him. I don't know. Let me go back. <laughs> but he's fifty that. steps ahead of everybody. everybody. That's what I'm saying. Is everybody? Come on, have a fucking three point shootout with Je with Steph Curry. That's <laughs> how, how well that fits you. I don't give a fuck how long you in the gym. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The but, shit makes me. I wonder who else inspires Hove. That's what I was thinking, right? Like who else inspires Hove to snap like that? You know what I'm saying? Because to mm. me, when you're an artist like Hov who don't got nothing to prove anymore, yeah, you got you're only rapping somewhere. for inspiration at yeah. this point. Like, we know why What's Free inspired him. Yeah. It was the Biggie joint. Yeah. Because we know Biggie inspires Hov. It was the Biggie sample and the, and the subject matter. Yeah. Right? So, clearly this, Jay Ben God body. I think, yeah. the, I think the Griselda guys Yeah, I was going to say that too. I mm. think that, well, just me from working at Rockefeller, and that was a long time ago, but seeing what Jay's inspired by, he's inspired by people he sees himself in. Yeah. I think that's why, like, you know, with Benny the Butcher, the reason why he might fuck with Benny the Butcher so much might not so much be just the music, it's his story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The Benny was like, locked up with Emery, too. He was yeah. locked up with Emery, but it's yeah. like even West Side Gun, like, when it, when people, I, I would love for the nigga, besides music, to do a documentary on his life, because the nigga's life is crazy. crazy. West Side Gun? West Side Gun, yeah, His yeah. life is crazy, bro. I'm yeah. talking about prior to him making, he's another person that's not supposed to be here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that that's what Jay, Jay is inspired by like the shit that he seen people get through that he got through is like oh shit my god that Jay Z Griselda feature is gonna be phenomenal gonna be oh yeah it's gonna be nuts yeah I think he's I think he's Taylor just asked is he inspired by Drake or Kendrick I think he's I think Kendrick by definitely pro probably for the art I think Drake for competition like, yeah I think people that, saying he's the best and yeah. want to show him like that's ego though. Yeah, every, we all man, we all got ego. And I'm talking perfect. about with the Drake and Hove thing. That's ego though, because mm -hmm. like Drake is Drake's not on Hove's level. Oh, I mean, rapping wait, wise, he's stature wise, not even. But he's getting there. Yeah, he's getting there. Wait, wait, wait he's still, a second. He's, still, he's the be, he's the best rapper for the last. Drake's the LeBron of his era. Jay Z is the Jordan of his so era. This, this, Jordan's this, known as the greatest of all time. LeBron is his son. Wait a minute. So 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 look, so hold up a second. Hold up a second. Cause with Drake, nah, Drake Lil Wayne Kobe. is Kobe. 
No. But, yes, he yes. is because he played in no. every era. Yes. Yes, he is. He played Lil in Wayne every era. Lil Wayne is Kobe. Lil Wayne is Kobe. Lil Wayne is Kobe. Lil Wayne is Kobe. You wouldn't have none of these rappers right now. The thing about Lil Drake Wayne. is. So who is Kanye then? Because I would think Kanye is Kanye Kobe. Kanye is him. He's, he's the only. <laughs> that nigga's him. I don't compare the nigga to nobody basketball wise. He's but Wayne more the, like Allen Iverson to me. Nah, man, nah. nah. Wayne, Allen Iverson never got a ring. Wayne got rings. Yeah. Wayne do got a ring. Wayne got rings, I'm, I'm, man. Right, more than one. But I, the reason I say Wayne is Allen Iverson is because. Allen Iverson was the father to his style, and he created a bunch of little I Allen Iversons. I get that. Everybody wanted to be Allen Iverson. He was a, he was a, he was a rebel, right? Lil Wayne was absolutely a rebel. I get that. Yeah. Allen, I don't think Allen was supposed to get to the heights that he was supposed to get. He to. wasn't because uh, he, he wasn't. But He's six foot six feet tall. I'm gonna tell you why. He I'm wasn't wait, supposed to be that up. guy. I got him right now. I'm gonna tell you why Wayne is Kobe. I, Allen Iverson, with everything you just said, he still was the number one pick in the draft. He still was projected to be great. Great, yeah. Kobe Bryant was the thirteen, the fourteenth pick in the draft, and then he was traded for fucking Vladdy D. Bro, Vladdy Wayne, 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 Wayne was, was projected to be number one. No, he wasn't. no, no he wasn't. juvenile Wayne was a was star. The, you crazy? Wayne, Wayne was, Birdman told y'all. Wayne was not, by the year two thousand, little Wayne gonna Bro, tear this Wayne game was up. He said BG. Yeah. Little Wayne was not better than BG at all. Birdman saw the vision. Y'all bucking. Listen, Listen, Birdman, listen you finished or you Wayne done? Wayne was not better than BG. <laughs> 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 and and the only reason why I compare at all, why I compare Hot Wayne boys, it was juvenile, BG, then Wayne and Turk, Wayne maybe. And Turk. You're you're absolutely right, but Birdman told y'all this. Where did he man, say it? He, he said, said it when he was the only one left. But we no, told him before you know. that. He said it on Blink. Allen Iverson was the number one fucking pick of the draft, yeah. my nigga. Like this nigga was picked before everybody who ended up having better careers than him. A lot yeah. of people had better careers than Wayne. Him I mean, before. listen, you can you can look at it like this when when juvenile. Mm-hmm. But, but, but I first heard Wayne on a BG album way back in the day, the Baby Gangsters. They used to Baby be a group. Gangsters, yeah, yeah. yeah. But by the time that they started like really popping, Juvenile then were kind of in the league. Wayne was the kid that was still in high school that they would let play pickup games with. Yeah. He by the time was, he got eligible for college, Kobe, Birdman said. By the year 2000, Lil Wayne going to tear this game up. Birdman was telling don't. everybody Wayne was going to be that nigga. Guess what? He did, and it still didn't happen then. Let's not it forget that. It didn't happen for Kobe immediately either, though. Exactly. It's, exactly. It, it, took, it, didn't, it took time. So Wayne, yeah. yo. But Wayne, that's why I say Wayne is opposite. No, listen. No, Wayne, no was Wayne, respected, Wayne was respected as an artist. Like, people... People like that. He made no one saw Wayne becoming Wayne. No one saw Kobe Bird becoming Wayne. Nobody, did. nobody was oh, nobody, nobody in they, nobody in their right mind. Charlamagne, you from the south. Nobody in their right mind thought that Little Wayne was gonna be get, getting compared to the top lyricists in the game at one point in time. Ever. I can tell you. I can tell you. I can tell you when that. I can tell you. I can tell you when that shifted. You like twelve? Stop it. No. That's I, a, I, was like, I can tell you when it shifted. When it shifted around two thousand. One two thousand two when he started doing the dedication. Dedication two. That was, that was years later. Yeah, well, that was like no, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. No, nah. t- dedication two is two thousand seven. He yeah, did dedication two thousand seven. Let's look this up, Bro, guys. I promise you, me and DJ yeah. Drama just arguing about this shit. Yeah, Yo, let's Wayne, look this up. Squad up. No, you forget squad, squad up. Squad up. Yeah. Gutter gutter in them. That happened in two thousand. Well, it was definitely five hundred degrees. Yeah. Was two thousand five. Dedication 2005. two changed. Dedication two changed everything for lights Wayne. Lights out. Niggas was not saying Niggas was in Jack and Wayne when Wayne did lights out. Even Carter One niggas was in Jack and Wayne. Oh five. Oh yeah. five was the first dedication. Dedication. So what was the joints that he was putting out? Because around oh two or three. Squad up. Squad up. He wasn't doing no. He wasn't rapping like that. In two, yes, it was because there was this he one. Wasn't rapping album. like that to the kid. There was this one project. I forgot what it was. Where Manny Fresh goes. Like Lil Wayne comes in and he he just raps during an interlude and he's bodying that shit. But and I'm then saying, Manny comes in and goes, mm-hmm. Wayne, get the fuck out of here with all that murder, murder, kill, kill shit. I'm trying to be happy and do nice shit. But at that point, you was like, damn. But Wayne that's not, snapping what I'm saying lately. is, is for mainstream niggas was not paying that no more. Niggas started paying mine, paying Wayne mine. Carter uh, Carter one is like, oh, okay, the nigga correct. Cool. Carter two, definitely. But, but dedication, no, but dedication, dedication two came out before Carter, Carter one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carter two. I mean, the dedication two changed man, everything. Come on, bro. I, I said I, I said the DJ drama. I said, yo, bro, that's the great. That to me, that's my favorite. One of my favorite mixtapes all time. One of my favorite. Okay, well, let's let me, let me say this. Mm-hmm. Let's just say I acquiesce, and I say he is the Kobe, which I don't think he is. I think he's Allen Iverson. But if he is the Kobe, that means that he's the guy, huh? <laughs> oh shit. Don't do that. Kanye's no, Dennis Rodman. Rodman. No, no, no. Dennis Taylor. Rodman. Taylor. Taylor. Come on, stop Taylor. it. Yeah. Social distancing. Go back up. Social distancing. Back away from the microphone. Six feet. Social distancing. <laughs> Wayne ain't that close to Jay. Um, Kobe's close to Jordan. Wayne ain't that close to Jay. I mean, in rap. In, in See, rap. we compare them. We compare yeah. them. We compare Let's them just talk art. Wise. Let's just talk art. 
Let's just but, talk art. But I will say this though, Charlamagne. Wayne is dope, but he's not that close to but, Jay. But this, I feel like every generation, because even Jay, they ha- we have our Michael Jordan of our generation, yeah. right? The big. When I think of bro, it was uh, what's his name, Wayne. For the generation, the last generation. Yep. Drake is that nigga. Like it, as much as Drake is the LeBron, bro. I, I'm not even going. No, if we're gonna compare him as on some rap shit, if we see him as a as a artist, or, we're just personal with Jay Z. We're very personal with Jay-Z, Drake is bro. the Jay Z of these he's kids the, right now. Drake right is LeBron. Now. No, talk he, about him in rap terms. He, he's the Jay Z of he's right the now. Of, of the last eight, yeah. ten years. Because my son don't Absolutely. even jack the nigga. Like my son's like, man, I don't listen to that. And he's gonna go through that. He's gonna go through the same shit that we when we telling kids, you don't listen to Jay Z. They're like, what, nigga, Little Wayne. Yeah, he's gonna go through that. One hundred percent. Drake. If we talking about music, yeah, Drake, Drake is the Jay Z of, of the generation. He's the fucking rapping Michael Jackson. But he's also the he's LeBron. The code. And and and, the, and the, the analogy with LeBron is even closer because um because he because he got rings, but he. But he, he got rings, but right. it's asterisks next to a lot of those rings because of the ghostwriting and stuff like that. They give LeBron asterisks because he went to go play in Miami. But right. the reason I would never give LeBron an asterisk because he won that Cleveland goddamn ring. Yeah. That That's a, a hard one, baby. Anyone. That one ring is worth 15 rings anywhere else. Yes. Yo, you know, I'm so happy you say that because... I've been watching basketball faithfully since like 1990, 91, and that's the best championship. I have yeah, three one. Yeah. The best championship yeah, I've ever seen. The Golden State Warriors was 73 and 9. They were down 3 1. And tell he you, won it for his hometown. That's a big, that's a ring that's, ring. That's a I'm going to tell you, yeah. you know what this, all the things that we say, you know what this says a lot about? We're not calling nobody the Kyrie a rap. <laughs> and I love Kyrie. No, man. Man. Let's, go, let's go next. Jay, Electron- <laughs> Jay Electronica might be the Kyrie. No, you're not one. going to do that. On a written testimony. <laughs> no, he might, be, he might be. So he nah, might be man. on a written testimony. But Drake and LeBron are just they, like they, they're so similar because of that. The mm-hmm. asterisks that people put next to them yeah. with the longevity. LeBron been in the league 17 years, still balling. Front, yo, that shit Drake was... has a 10-year run. And I've Drake never seen an artist have this kind of run. run. Yo, bro, I ain't gonna lie with Drake. Like, even if you don't, like, even if a nigga be like, man, I don't like that nigga or whatever, it's no way possible you could go to his concert and not enjoy yourself. You can't, Remember front, we you can't front on shit? Drake, bro. Yeah. We, we, me and Charlamagne was at the Summer 16 shit, and both of us, I was like, I did not I get this it. nigga had. Like, yeah, I was like, yo, this I get is it. crazy. I get this it. nigga nice, man. My favorite part of that whole concert was when he just did features. Yeah, when he did the features. He going to feature bag. features. Bro, but he, and he took the shit. You know how JB, like, Hove used to do the shit where he be like, he used to just play put, a song. Just play anyone. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that nigga did, wor- bro, he did worse behavior. That shit was like 15 seconds and turned it turned off. It I can't off. believe he turned it off. Turned it off. But the he had, whole shit was he rocking. Has, he has so many hits. Yeah, Listen, his place, is, his place is solidified in hip-hop history. But I'm going to tell you something. This shit is going to really bother me if we don't figure out who the fuck Kanye West is. <laughs> I'm dead serious because y'all's fronting uh, on Kanye. Tracy Nah, no, man. man. Ye got Kanye rings. got rings. First of all, Ye got hella rings. Kanye got rings. Ye, Ye nah, Shaq. Ye nah. Shaq, yo. Ye Shaq. I'm going to tell you why Ye is Shaq. He was dominant. He was the most dominant. He he he, 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 he produced his own shit. He, he really disrupted the game in that way. When he produced his own shit when it comes to Shaq. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't know. Yeah. I haven't figured. I haven't figured this out yet. We just we we, we beaten. We we, we, we try. Right. We, we gonna beat this up. Okay. I could say he could be Shaq. I can make a case that Kanye West is Shaquille O'Neal because of the way he came in and disrupted every fucking thing. I can say never he's seen... not though because Kanye inspired a bunch of people. You don't see none. Nobody want to be like Shaq right now in the league. You can't though. But Dwight Howard did want to be like Shaq. But you I will can't say be if like... he is Shaq, if Kanye is Shaq, he's definitely Shaq on the Celtics right now. <laughs> no. He's Shaq on the Celtics. Yeah. The real Cleveland. He might be Shaq on Cleveland. Y'all forgot yeah. that Shaq played for Cleveland. I remember and Phoenix. And Phoenix. So, so, so Kanye not chasing the ring right now? Nah. He's not ring chasing. So how's he Shaq? You got to compare the career. I don't think Shaq man. was ring chasing. Shaq was the ring chasing? So then he was. Nah, I just think Shaq he played on son. 14. <laughs> he was playing <laughs> LeBron, bro. <laughs> I really think Shaq was just living life. I, on, I really man. do. I think he was just traveling, bro. He just Shaq, wanted to experience. He just wanted to experience just, different shit. Let me go see how he's playing in Boston. He needed to travel. He was trying to get another. Uh, he was trying to get another Kobe, ring, man. He went to Boston after Boston beat that Laker team. Yeah, I ain't get that. Why do I think Kanye is Shaq? Yeah, you gonna we gonna have to. Nah. I'm just throwing out Nah. And I don't want yeah, I, I, I don't want to say Tim Duncan cuz I think J, I big think J Cole J Cole is the Tim Duncan of rap. That's fair. Absolutely. He's the That's big fair. fundamental. That's yeah. fair. You know what I'm saying? You never hear, but I, it'd be unfair saying that sometimes. Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Because when it comes to the Spurs in the history of history you never heard a nigga say, "Man, I got to get home and catch the Spurs game." <laughs> never. 
doesn't take away from their greatness. Doesn't take away from the because Spurs is one of the greatest to me, and I love Phil Jackson to death. But Popovich might be over Phil. Yeah, because because Phil got lucky with a few of the players he had. He had two of the best shooting guards of all time. That's a fact. He yeah. had Shaq, the best dominant big man of all time. Popovich makes niggas into what he wants them to be. Yeah. He it'd be somebody like Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, if he would have went into the Pacers, wouldn't have been Kawhi Leonard today. Nah, if he, he, he maximized good. their potential. Yeah. So you know, who's the player in the NBA that we've never quite seen anything like 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 him before? No, I, I think he that's don't have Shaq. The stats. <laughs> he got the rebound stats. That's it. Emotionally? Kanye nah, we ain't talking about emotions. Nah, nah, yeah, come on. That's why I think it's Shaq. I think it's Shaq because we never had seen anything like Shaq in the league, and we have yet to see anything like Shaq since. So let me ask you, that's what I'm saying. So is Jesus, We've seen other wait, producers is Jesus a king ring chasing? Yes. Not to the level of Kanye. Wait, though. is Jesus is king ring chasing? No. That's heaven chasing. That man trying uh, to get into heaven. Come on, man. That man trying to get into heaven, Wayno. Oh, don't, don't, don't spit it like that, man. The moral of the story is a written testimony. <laughs> it's a dope album. Yeah, it's very dope album. I fuck with it. I don't like I Flux Capacitor. I do wish that there was about two more Just Blaze records. Right. The act like Jay Electronic ain't, up, ain't on there barring people up is wrong. Because yes. he is. But he's just standing next to the greatest rapper of all time. The Mike Jordan of recording. Yeah. And I can't think of too many MCs who would be able to stand up to the J. Only like three niggas that actually held their own on a record with him. Who were the three? Beanie Siegel being one. Beanie Siegel definitely had a Kanye. Beanie oh, was one. Run his town. Come on, Kanye. Yeah. Bro, Kanye. Kanye held. Kanye held his own on the. He fucking, got the best verse. On that ain't one of my. That's not a. I don't even consider that like a J. That could. <clears throat> Let's take ourselves out of rest of what, yeah. I'm sorry. Social distancing. <laughs> That's but that let, let's take ourselves out of... It's allergies, bro. Let's, Charlotte, man, let's take ourselves out of Reservoir Dogs time when niggas was rapping like that. Um, Run This Town, Kanye verse on that shit is... When I think of a Kanye J barring up record, I think of Diamonds and Sierra Leone remix. Jay killed him. Jay's yeah, Jay body. Him. That's but that's Jay barring up on, on on run this time. That's just Jay playing with the beat. We are. This no, is, this, I no, hate man, that song. Come on, man. man. But Kanye I still don't gotta, like that record. Like Beanie, gotta, Beanie Siegel. Nicki Minaj. You, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Or uh, Nicki Minaj on Monster. Nicki Minaj on Monster. Got to give that to Nicki, bro. Cannot take that from her. She got everybody on. She got every. Jay is on there. She got everybody. She got everybody on there. She got everybody on that. It don't. It don't matter. You rap it on somebody, and it's not. That's what makes it even better. Styles P on Reservoir Dogs. But that's a one. That's. But once. But but. But Styles P on Reservoir Dogs. But, 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 but right Jay got them back on 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 Blackout though. Jay got them back on Reservoir Dogs. He got them back. No, he got them back on Blackout. Wait, hold on. Let me on, pull on this shit. What niggas is hot heads and the bullets is he seeking? seeking? Yeah. Niggas is hot heading the bullets as he sees. They flow for pesos, chase hoes, not nah, just circle around the block and the drop, tell them jump to the top give, with a sun. Fuck, fuck who you are. Fuck who you are. I don't care about your pretty bitch. Watch, watch your car. car. I don't care about your block and whoever you shot. I don't care about y'all whoever, <laughs> whoever you drop. I don't care about your past. If I did all the ass, I'm too, too busy like the drove with a whole lot of hash. Yeah, but then so, Jay. <laughs> no, that, as far as rap shit, I'm 10 steps ahead of nigga shooting backwards, backwards just, just to practice. Now that was hard. That was hard. But Jay, what the hell with you? But Jay, what the hell with you? Jay said, I know you, I know pop you can't stand us cause you cocked them hammers running your crib no prisoners pop your grandma locked in the slammer no popped, popped up, up in Atlanta, Atlanta crossed up in the drop I popped, popped up the antenna, antenna. whoa watch, watch your manners when my veins pop like, like scanners like raindrops you hear the thunder when I, I cock the cannon. cannon big thing big nah, change ain't shit change nah, but I ain't gonna front Beanie Siegel got a Beanie Siegel got a uh, Beanie Siegel verse on that shit is crazy too let me see yeah. Beanie shit. See who got him on the other shit. I take you out this world, butt naked, oh, yeah, covered yeah, yeah, in blood, yeah. gasping for air, yeah, yeah. Well, clinging for dead light. Once again, it's on. Yeah. But I heard way, that. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, by the way, that's you, a, you talking that's about? A diss too. You talking about a four guys? Wow. You talking about three guys averaging thirty on yeah. a on a, on a track on a record? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that? Like that's that's not a drop off. Nah, it's, you know what I mean? That's three elite, elite level, level yeah. MCs. Thank you. And I'm not saying Jay Electronic is not an elite level MC, but I don't know if he's an elite level MC. He don't, I think he he's a really dope body MC. Work. Yeah, he don't have long enough body of work. He, he don't put out enough music for us to for call the judge, him yeah. elite. I think that he is elite. He just got to, like, and he doesn't, I, I feel like how you were saying about, like, Cardi, not like Cardi B in the same sense, but, like, it, does he have to drop any more music like that? Is he going to? I don't think Jay Electronic is going to drop no music. Are y'all scaring him off? That's not nobody scaring <laughs> him off. He been, yeah. he been not putting out music. For, like, some, for somebody like me, I'm a little biased just because I really love the subject matter. But I can acknowledge that I don't think Jay's Electronica is an elite level MC. Yeah. I think he's a dope MC. He could be. He's 45. Hove. 
<laughs> he could he could be, a, but I'm saying he could be an elite level MC if he had consistency. Now, if tomorrow or next week that Just Blaze, if Just Blaze, if you hear this, the drop, drop that down because we ain't got shit else better to <laughs> yeah, do. We all listen. You can't even fucking eat in in McDonald's if you want to, right? Like, yeah. If he dropped that shit and it's bars that's just as heavy and and just as impactful, then we see some consistency. Yeah. It took 10 years for us to get eight songs. I think that's the part that everybody's critical of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah, niggas yeah. can't... He couldn't... And that's the reason why Jay had to be on it. And I had this conversation with Yo Gotti one time. He's like, man, right now... He's like, I just took three years off from putting on putting out my album. He's like, these niggas today can't not put out an album for three years. Cannot. They can't. Cannot. Lil Uzi can. Kendrick Lamar can. <laughs> Kendrick, Lamar <laughs> Kendrick Lamar can. Kendrick Lamar can. Hold on, I want to I come back and talk about Uzi. I'm going to put a button on the written testimony shit. Go read a message to the black man and then go listen to a written testimony. Burn some sage, light some candles. Um, I think you might appreciate it, okay? Uh, let's pay some bills. All right, let's talk about hymns. Uh, me and Wayno, we both have this problem. 40% of men um, struggling with not being able to get and maintain an erection. No, that's not this. That's just mine. What? What? <laughs> Don't, nigga, don't be grouping me into your bullshit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that happens by age 40, but hymns is the tiny pill worthy of a big celebration. This is what me and Wayno come into play. Fourhymns.com is your one stop shop for hair loss. <laughs> I seen Wayno with his hat off in the gym the other day. He had the fresh baldy. Yeah, I had the fresh baldy. But I can one. see the shadow. You can see the shadow. <laughs> 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 I get it. Okay, skin care and sexual wellness for men. Go to fourhims.com, man. Uh, thanks to science, erectile dysfunction oh can be optional. God. Okay, hims connects you with real licensed doctors and FDA approved pharmaceutical products to help you combat ED. They offer well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions and answer all your questions in a confidential chat. Okay, now once your medical history is overviewed and you're approved by a doctor, products are shipped directly to your door. Okay, try hims today by starting out with a free online visit. Go to fourhims.com slash idiots. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash idiots. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds of dollars if you went in to a doctor's office or a pharmacy, but you can go to fourhims.com slash idiots and get a discount. Let me tell you something. These things like four hymns, I saw this other commercial earlier, which I'm not going to name, but it was another uh, commercial for sexual enhancement. And I really sat down and I thought about it. If we're going to be quarantined for a few weeks, y'all might as well jump on this stuff like four hymns and really like increase your libido to really, you know, put it down while, while, while you and your, 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 your old <laughs> Yo, lady don't in the crib. Don't look, look at me. I want to say, why are you looking at him? Why are you saying this? I'm just telling you. Like, this is good stuff. We've yes. had this conversation before. I Have might, you? Huh? Have you? Not about that. Oh. I'm talking about the headline <laughs> shit. Oh, okay. yes. I, I, nigga, I don't, I don't mind. Get, listen. It's a new day, man. I knew you when I, you had a hairline. You knew me when I had my shit. You know what my problem with my shit is? I could grow all my hair everywhere except for right there. That's because you used to grow up watching the Jeffersons. You love that show so much. <laughs> no, you but you know what? But you know what? Somebody hair. told me no bullshit when I was wearing hats. hats. Like they used to tell me, "Yo, stop wearing hats. them hats. Stop wearing yeah. them hats." I remember hats. when my shit first started going whole. My shit, I had the little shark bites right here. I was like, "Damn, bro. Yeah, bro. For me, it was the barbers that was trying to get your line so crispy. My cousin Don. Trying to get my line so crispy. He's push a barber now. A what bit. pushed me all the way the fuck back? Yeah, but you was going crazy. You was lining up your eyebrows too. I was wilding. Yeah, yeah, yeah you was yeah. wilding. Women, said, man, yeah. women will have you doing crazy <laughs> shit. I don't know about lining up your eyebrows. Nah, that must be man. Some oh. shit. <laughs> that no, was listen. Like, when I, I used to, I said, I used to man, work, I used to work. This just, nigga is getting money. Once I saw that, this nigga started getting no, money. No, I, 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 I was getting my eyebrows <laughs> arched when I was broke. I never got my eyebrows arched in in the in the future. I got them done in the past. With the he got the picture with the lasers in the background. You know the old the old prom joint. The old prom joint. Yes. Yeah, man. You know why? Because I used to work at this telemarketing place called Paragon <laughs> Solutions. And it was uh, two girls that worked there, two of my homies. Her name is uh, Shanira and Nina. I'll never forget them. They gassed me up to get my eyebrows arched. They told me, yo, Tupac gets his eyebrows arched. And I said, for real? And they was like, yeah. They was like, Tupac got an arch in his eyebrows. And I went to the barber. I was like, yo, I want to like, arch my eyebrows. They didn't know how to arch eyebrows for guys. So he arched my shit like a girl. And then... <laughs> Then Yo, when you when you when you when you hit when you hit the hood when you hit the hood, oh here you go. When you hit the hood and you got women saying to you, Oh, your eyebrows look so good, they telling you that your eyebrows look good based For off them. them. Oh. Bro, his shit was looking like the nigga from Flash Gold and Zotar nigga. Nah, the shit was bad, yo. yo. Shit like, the shit was bad. And I remember, like I remember wax waxing my boy Potter 
They called me one day. There was a G Unit mixtape, and it was somebody on G Unit mixtape that said, "The next nigga I see with their eyebrows arch, I'm smacking the shit out of them." So when I answered the phone, I'm like, "Hello," and that's all I kept hearing. Over, they just kept playing it back over and over and over and over and over and over. And I let my shit grow out. Nah, man, that's so wild. That shit's nasty. I that's a, that was a terrible time. But nigga, you getting money? You don't care about no fucking hairline. Both of y'all niggas, who I cares? don't care about that shit. Yeah. I just don't want to. I don't want to get caught up in something so superficial mm-hmm. that I that I gotta like. Get the blackout and all that. Like, I, I miss ain't got waves, time though. for that. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I miss having waves. Yo, listen. Why? Yo, listen. My wife owns a hair salon. They do waves. Nah, see, I'm not trying to do the cap. <laughs> Get the cap. I'm not doing the cap because the cap could come off. I'm no, not no. To she put shit on your shit. Nah, I'm not going up on my head, my nigga. It's crazy that the cap is cap. <laughs> the cap is cap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I did it, I'm doing the Tory Lane shit. All yeah, they're yeah, doing the is using your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put the shit back. The DJ Envy. You tried it? I did the PRP. You know what? I'm I'm a I'm a Not beat. the PRPS, that's the clothes. You said it hurt, the PRP. Right? <laughs> no, but you know what I'm gonna do? You know how people say, that was this nigga. That ain't going that's not gonna work for me. I'm just gonna work for me. No, nah, I did it. Dr. <laughs> Sandy did it for me one time. She gassed me up to do it. <laughs> how much it cost? Like it's like three, three, three racks, but it's like it's like six different procedures. But that shit hurt so bad, I stopped doing. it. I'm like, I'm not doing this shit no more, yo. I was getting headaches and shit. Like, nah, man. For real, I after the waves. third time, I'm like, man, I'm not doing that shit. Right now, listen, man. Come now, on, my kids, beauty I, market you know salon. They'll set you up. Every time I think about doing, it, I think about my kids. They, they gonna, gonna look fry me. <laughs> now these, yo, my kids are so ruthless. They gonna fry me. Yo. Yeah, like, I remember being little. My pops, like my pops, was like. 30, he had full gray hair, gray beard, so yeah. I know my shit gonna be gray when I get older. That nigga, I came to crib one day in high school, that nigga hair was black. I laughed that nigga <laughs> under the bus. He Yo, was so mad. Fuck that black. <laughs> Yo, I just started getting grays like two months ago. No bullshit. I got grays on my yeah, balls. I know I'm be gray. Come on, yeah, brother. I'm, I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of podcast is this? Yeah, like, yeah. You've been here four times. This is how I usually go. No, I only got, I only got, I only got service, two. Right? Listen, getting older is a motherfucker, but I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? The reason I appreciate getting older because people wake up dead every goddamn day. And I want to enjoy every... Wake up dead? Well, yes. Don't wake up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but I want to enjoy every freaking year. But you do start to notice things as you oh, get older. Yeah. It's just Like even my workouts change now because my knees ain't the same. You know what I'm saying? You taking a piss, you notice the couple gray hairs on your balls. You're like, I got a wise dick. You know what I mean? You just got to look at the bright side. And when I do manscape, I don't cut them off. <coughs> Charlamagne, I'm going to keep it 100. This is useless knowledge right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of, speaking of useless knowledge, let's talk about things you won't care about next week. All right, this is when we just run through some hot topics, okay? Uh, Waka has an issue with the flip the switch challenge. Do y'all have an issue with the flip the switch challenge? I somewhat, yes. Or talk to me. Not a real issue, but I just think like I'm gonna keep it a hundred, man. Like love ain't gonna make me put your high heels and your dress on just so you can get some likes. I never had that type of love. Like you know what I mean? And people be like, "Oh, it ain't that serious for you. It ain't like I just I'm not doing that." You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but when your girl tell you that it's cute, you probably fall victim to it the same way I fell victim to the arched eyebrows. Women are having doing some strange things. Ago. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you ain't You're doing right. no flip the switch challenge. No, nah, I'm not doing that right. shit. Uh, nah. yeah, I'm cool. I, I, I think I, that there is a little bit of an attack on male masculinity a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think this is a light. I don't think it was. Hotel Hove, challenge. let's go. I, I don't think this challenge was meant for that, but you, it's yeah. a little underlined, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not tripping over. I don't. I don't I, yeah. I, you know, it's just like, um, you know, it's, I don't know. Men run this planet, but it's like every time a man says something about being a man, People just get so offended about yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It, it, it's nothing wrong with, like, I, I feel like people, you you right to have your stance on whatever, but when I have a stance on something and can't, I, I yeah. can't. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, you can say whatever you want that could possibly hurt my feelings, but if I say something that hurts yours, then I'm the wrong person. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not entertained by the flip the switch challenge. I'm, I'm, just, yeah, yeah. I'm just not. It's not entertaining to me. I'm not. It's just not. Like I don't. It was cool the first like two three times. After that, I was like, all right. That's something somebody does once, and you're like, oh, that was that, that was, yeah. funny. That was yeah. slick. Yeah. But then when you see everybody doing it over and over, it's like, eh, yeah. I ain't like it. I like the creative ones. I saw one with a dude flip the switch with his dog. Yeah, that was You funny. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was funny. The guy had his baby diaper on. That would be uh, dope. I don't know if that's dope, but it I was mean, funny. I see it. <laughs> I laughed. I chuckled. <laughs> it's kind of funny. The, flip, the switch challenge is going to die when um, Caitlyn Jenner do it. She gonna do one. Oh. And she gonna, I'm telling you, she gonna body it. <laughs> Watch. She, she oh, gonna. Man. Be, she, oh, what you gonna do, oh, Chris? She gonna be the period. No, she gonna. It's gonna. She gonna do it herself. And be right back. It's gonna be CGI. It'll be the old. It'll be the Bruce. Flip the switch. It'll be Caitlyn. You be like, oh shit, we've had enough. I'm telling you. We do that. I mean, where's where's Caitlyn? I ain't seen. I ain't been looking. Yeah, I ain't been looking either. I just ain't you know heard nothing. 
Um, coronavirus. We talked about that. Donovan Mid- Donovan Mitchell has corona. Kevin Durant has corona now. Idris Elba has corona. I don't know what to tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just think that we got to lean into the uncertainty of it all when it comes to the coronavirus. You know, like I said, you you when it comes to your health, there's nothing you can do about that. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of status that can, you know, stop you from catching a disease. You know, um, I, I'm, just, I'm just happy that it's something that people can survive. You know, my, my homegirl, Bo Nong, from South Africa, she put some things in perspective for me. She was here last week. She literally came on a Wednesday, was supposed to stay a week, saw the hysteria on the news. Her mom started calling her like, no, we need you back home in South Africa. She got on the next thing smoking and flew back. But she said to me like, why is everybody tripping? It's like it's like the flu. She was like, yeah. we got malaria. Malaria kills three, four million people a year. She said, yeah. we went through Ebola. Ebola had a 50% fatality Africa. rate in, right. in, in Africa. You know what I'm saying? And that kind of put things in perspective for me, you know? America not used to nothing. We spoiled. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, what puts it into perspective also is that uh, the world don't care about black people. Like, like <laughs> just, just to keep it 100, like in, in that context, like it's no, well, not comparing the two, but I look at it the same way how um, I remember uh, they said that Obama had asked uh, China for like engineering jobs or something like that. And they said, no, because China produces a million engineers a year yeah. and they was like, what, could they get these jobs over there? Like, no. It's like, because a lot of people is not growing up in this country to be, you know, engineers, engineers you know what I'm saying? So. It's just, the standards change with a lot of stuff. I mean, m- malaria, these, these things that's been plaging in Africa have been happening for forever. years. Forever. Forever. But the thing about it is, it's like, if it's not in a place where niggas are stealing them natural resources or it's not in a place they where... They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. Come on, man. Yeah, Flint man. still ain't got clean water, by yeah, the way. Flint yeah, Flint ain't got clean water. And now they have uh, have <laughs> a coronavirus, too. Like so. Yeah, Amer- America just not used to nothing. Um, This is a good... I don't want to say social experiment, but it just shows us that like it's just little things that we have to learn to do on our own. That's why I love being from the South, because, you know, we do learn to live off the land. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I was talking to Andrew earlier this week and he's telling me about how Corona's all over this place. Corona's all over that place. And I said, Andrew, you ordering Uber Eats, ain't you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If the shit can live on services, you got somebody fixing your food in the restaurant. Right. You got somebody delivering your food. They bag it up for you. They put it in the Uber Eats. They deliver it to you like, yeah. you know, and he's like, yeah, but we got to eat. And that was that made me think like, boy, America's so spoiled because if that is what we're depending on to eat, yeah, I ain't depend on the Uber. Woo! Eats. Imagine when these restaurants. Imagine when some real apocalyptic <laughs> shit happen and shit can't move at all. Yeah, yeah. Niggas better have they, you better learn how to the hammers farm. and all that. Yes, shit you better learn how to motherfucking farm. You better learn how to fish. You right. know. And to go back what you said too. You know, I was I was thinking about this um when because you said something about engineering, and I thought about this when we talk about having a black agenda with these politicians like. I think that should be part of the black agenda. I think that they should make trade school free. Mm. Not just yeah, not just these, you know, these HBCUs and these PWIs. Like make trade school free. People need yeah. to learn how to do shit with their hands again, man. Fix the yeah, car, bro. change the tire. I just yo, you know it's crazy like cuz with this whole the first time I ever voted, I only voted cuz they said vote, you know what I mean? And I was old enough, but now I really don't trust no politicians at all. You shouldn't. Like, oh, none of them, yeah. like none of them. Like I, I understand like the the whole local politics. I started getting into that like three three or four years ago when uh, one of my homegirls started putting me on about local politics because I'm always thinking about how to change the hood, even though I don't live there. I'm like, yo, that's... You're th- from there. Yeah, I'm from there. So it's like, I, that's why I want to change first. <laughs> but it's like, no president, none of the shit that they saying really pertains okay. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to how I'm living or the people I love is how they living. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man. I'm. Yeah, that's why I think they should, uh, you know, make trade school free just because, number one, that'll get the economy popping quick because people can go out there and get jobs immediately. Everybody need plumbers. Everybody need electricians. Yeah. Everybody need people to fix their motherfucking air conditioner. Everybody need somebody to fix their goddamn car. You know what I mean? You went to trade school? No. I went to trade school before. I ain't, I've, I've done nothing. Quit in like, <laughs> in like three weeks. <laughs> what, what kind of trade was it? Carpentry. First it was, first it was carpentry. And you it was go like, with wood. No, the fuck. Pause. But um, <laughs> secondly, <laughs> yeah. that was crazy. But, um, <laughs> but no, but with carpentry, it was like they give you a box, right, of wood, and you had to like make all of the edges round. Every time I got to the third one, the shit kept breaking. So then I was like, "Yo, can I switch my trade?" They put me in a, a, a welding. Man, I did that shit for five minutes and quit, bro. Because they put you in that dark ass room with that thing on your yeah. face. I thought I was gonna set myself on fire because the shit that you, the welding shit got stuck. It shit started sparking. I was bitching. I ran out the room. <laughs> you do realize if everybody think the world going to end like they think thinking now and they mm-hmm. think some apocalyptic shit going to happen, you know those are the people we call in first, right? 
with the, the people, people that know how to do those trades, people that know how to weld, people that know how to do plumbing, people that know how to fucking do electricity, all plumbing. of that type of shit. If, if the world ends, ends, it's gonna be because the polar caps break. But we still got, it, we gotta rebuild. Gonna be of the, uh, it's, you know what I mean? It's gonna be from the polar, the polar caps melting. It's not gonna be from. I'm with you. Save the polar bears. That's why yeah. I no disrespect right. to nobody out there. I think climate change is some nonsense. And the reason I think climate change is some nonsense, yes, I will do my part to try to reverse. You know what's been going on on this planet, but ain't no reversing it. The Earth tired of us. The Earth sick of our shit. I was just okay? watching this shit on National Geographic last night, man. The polar caps is melting. They yeah. sick of us. You know it's crazy when people be telling us about like two. Like we only got for us two thousand twenty recorded years, and people be talking about two billion two billion years ago. So how many how many Earths has it been? Yes. Yeah. How many how many that's how many gotta... species have come and gone? Oh yeah, polar bears, dinosaurs, cavemen. I'm happy you always talk about aliens and shit, bro. Word. Because I'm going to keep it 100. If you look at animals, if these niggas could open their mouth and say something, they'd be aliens. Yeah. They, like the yeah, shit, yeah, I seen yeah, some yeah. shit the other day that looked like some shit straight out of Men in Black. If this motherfucker could have said hi, I'd have been scared to death. Bro, yeah, let's, but let's, it's, it's, think about this. We never heard dinosaurs make a noise. We made up a whole... Right. Where they sound. Yeah, they're, where they sound. How? <laughs> how, do you know, how do we know that? Right. Imagine what turtles have seen. What? Yeah, turtles turtles live thousands hundred? of years. Yeah, yeah. Turtles be probably looking at us like, man, I can't wait to no, these niggas so go many, extinct. Yo, you, it's so many, but you know a lot of like science fiction, like movies is reflected by nature because like, I, I just was watching some shit the other night about, um, uh, I forgot, parasites, right? Mm -hmm. And they show some shit about these fucking, uh, this like spores and it shit reminded me of Alien Covenant. Remember how the spores got yeah. in people and then they got the alien inside of them? Fucking spore gets on an ant. It drives the ant crazy, bro. Makes the ant walk out of the colony and go sit on a limb until it dies and then grows out of the ant. Imagine some shit like that happen to people. But people, I'm, and I'm not saying coronavirus ain't a serious thing, but there's so many things that go know. on that could... By the way, we bullshitting. That might be why the government tripping. This is just Charlemagne conspiracy theory. Uh, <laughs> that coronavirus might be a plant, and they might have already been experimenting with this shit and saw what happens after nine, ten months. We might turn into gremlins or some wild shit. I'm serious, <laughs> yo. That's why they quarantine the motherfuckers like, yo, don't eat after midnight. Don't fucking get wet. Like, seriously. Yeah, I don't, don't like the word Don't quarantine. get high and watch Net Geo or the news. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you, you see all them locusts? I think that's in yeah, Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in the that's, that's revelation. The that's what that's what Jay Electronica raps on that on the Ribbon Testimony. Yeah, He's like locust, locust something in plagues. Ebola virus is a plague. Coronavirus is a plague. These fucking locusts. You, you ain't see this shit? Yeah, yeah. I see. I seen the, the video of it. The look yeah. like that. Like this shit is really fucking happening. But guess what? You get what you ask for. If you've been going to church all these years and you've been hearing about that second coming, this might be it. And what are you gonna do? Hey, Amen. There's nothing you can do about it. So you think I'm about to stress? Yeah, I ain't stressing, what man. What you gonna do? I ain't stressing. I'm just in the crib with the kids. What if this the end? Then it's the end. It's the fucking end. end. Yo, you know what? I asked my son about that. I asked my son Bring the NBA he, back. Bro, I asked end. my son what he thought about like all this coronavirus shit and all that. He was just like, I guess if you get it, you get it. <laughs> That's what he said. He was like, if you get it, you get it. That's the best like, way to have it. like innocence, man. Bro, it's, I mean, what can we do? Deepak Chopra, uh, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success. The sixth one is um, the law of detachment. And he said, talks about how you just got to lean into the uncertainty of anything, you know, and you know, when it's any type of turmoil, when it's any type of problem, when it's confusion, lean into it because there's a solution within all that confusion. Yeah. Hopefully, we get to the confu uh, we get to the solution before whoever is watching us gets tired of watching us. Because trust me, it's somebody up there in the universe, a higher power that's watching us like Netflix, and he fell asleep or she <laughs> fell asleep, and that's it. Are you have you are you continuing to watch this program? Oh, wow. And the numbers are counting down. That's very scary. And if, and if she if she if he or she don't say yes, this might be it. Last episode might be Corona. It's quite possible. It's quite possible. All right, that was enough of uh, things you want. Things you won't care about uh, next week, and we can end the show with some asking idiots. You got what asking idiots you got? You said what? Oh, I do. You know what, Taylor? That's why you're the producer. All right, let me pay some bills real quick. Uh, turn your dream into reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online, and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch your upgrade ever. Buying domain 
games is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people, from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot, offer code idiot. Now let's get back to the show. I know God got a sense of humor, though. That's why he made this come out during allergy season. I'm serious because you know when you sitting around trying to hold in coughs and hold in sneezes every time you do that I guarantee you the way we laughed at that Lou, uh, Lou Rawls meme you saw the Lou Rawls meme mm-hmm. when he's singing and he starts coughing but he's trying to hold it in because he's singing at the same time <laughs> the way we laughed at that meme it's a higher power laughing at us the same way oh man okay ask an idiot this is a good one from at TJ Bottle Pockets he says where are y'all gonna go if the apocalypse happens Hove talk to me if the apocalypse happened I'm not going nowhere yeah where I'm going? I'm staying in the house with my children, my f- wife, my loved ones. Say a couple of uh, prayers, and that's it. Where I'm going? Wayno, where are you going if the apocalypse happens? I'm being a crib too, man. You know, got a lot of food, PlayStation. I'm a licensed firearm owner, so don't come knocking at my door on some bullshit. Yeah. I'll be good. I'm going to heaven. That's where I'm going <laughs> if the apocalypse happens. I'm going to be up there watching Wayno and um, Hove fight off people with guns. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully they get me and my family up out of here first. I'll, I'll make a place for y'all. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll hold the door for y'all. Yeah, send me a uh, DM from there. Um, at Amit Coward 28 says, what do you think America in the world will learn and put into action about coronavirus? I think that's a really good one. I think that America is going to learn that we're really not prepared for anything. America has been living too high off the hog for too long. A lot of things that we see happen in other countries, we just think that it can't happen to us because it's America. And um, it's kind of like when 9-11 happened in New York City, right? Like, you didn't think something that tragic could happen in New York, but you saw how it shut the city down. This right here is shutting the nation down. So I just think that, you know, one thing that we need to learn is that we're really not prepared. And number two, when shit hits the fan, we all in the same motherfucking boat, B. Absolutely. Period. We're not in control. That's the other thing. We're not in control, control. goddammit. The arrogance of men is to think that that we're in control. Especially the American man. Oh, You want to make God laugh? Tell him your plans. That's right. Right. Uh, Just Jay Walker, we're doing Ask an Idiot. He says, what's one thing you miss? I'm not answering that. That's stupid. <laughs> um, at Ryan D'Lo, Ask an Idiot says, who in the studio is the most likely to get the Wuhan? By the Wuhan, he means the coronavirus. <laughs> uh, inshallah, none of us get the coronavirus. Yeah. You know? Like, what the fuck? Who, who is most likely? <laughs> your mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck it, your mother. Your mother. <laughs> That's most likely to get right. um, At IMHWTN says, what's your opinion on the Bucks going after Tom Brady after Jameis Winston gets eye surgery to better his game? I, you know, it's hard for me to accept Tom Brady not playing in white, red, and blue. It's whack. Yeah, it's like it's like Jordan on the Wizards. It's like yeah. Peyton Manning on the Broncos. Even though Peyton did win a championship, so that that don't yeah, count. Days a number, Jameis. Yeah, he you gone. Gonna, you gonna be he going gone. to get your crab legs somewhere else, baby? He, yeah, he's yeah. a free agent now. Uh, Come I, on to the Giants, baby. I hope somebody pick him up. He'd be good in New York. Yo, the crazy thing nah, about but then y'all got a good quarterback though. Uh, man, the thing uh, about football though is like a, a nigga could be a quarterback for fifteen years and be losing. Like that shit is crazy. Yeah. One point, a point guard, you you fuck up the, the first it's season, over. it's over. You out of here. See what they did, Delonzo Ball. Um, oh, this is a good one. Ask an idiot. Uh, Andrews said, what do y'all think about Oprah trending on Twitter last night for human trafficking accusations? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I, I missed that she one. She was the number one trending topic. They said I that they that raided one. her crib and all that shit. Yeah. I, I, but then she said that she didn't raid her crib, that nobody raided her crib. She's been sanitizing and socially distancing herself. I think it's dangerous. Um, it's, it goes back to what I've been telling y'all about Are you social serious? media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes back to what I've been telling y'all about social media. Some Orson Welles, War of the World shit is going to happen on social media because niggas believe anything they see on social media. Like, somebody yeah. sent me that video yesterday afternoon. It was a fucking YouTube video, bro. Yeah. Do you understand if Oprah Winfrey's house got raided, that shit would be worldwide, <laughs> yeah. international news oh every gosh. fucking where. Not on some YouTube video. Yeah. The same niggas that believe in a flat earth believed in that Oprah Winfrey Sex trafficking video yesterday. That's Oprah and, Murphy's You know anybody who believe in flat Earth? Because I I know somebody. My wife's brother. I met somebody that that, that believes <laughs> For in real? it. Dog, I told you. You should tell him walk off it right now. That's what I told him. Yeah. I, said, I, believe, if it, I believe if it even was flat, you still couldn't walk off of it. If it was flat, why would they <laughs> lie to us about that? Why would it matter? Yeah. But the thing about, you know, everybody wants to believe 
something else that everybody else believes. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody wants to say, "Oh man, you believe that?" You it's like kind of like and no bullshit, man. Like what they did with Young Bird, bro. Like how people that jumped, yeah, that yo, people fun. jumped off the on my nigga, like jumped off the roof on him, was talking crazy, all of that, and then that woman need to be, that woman needs to be charged. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah that charged. shit is crazy. There should yo. be some charges brought up against her because women make these accusations about men. These accusations don't be true, and then nothing happens. Nothing. Happens. She tried to line that man up clearly. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Young Bird said that the woman. Uh, swung on him in the house. I don't believe in hitting women, but if there's ever an op- if there's ever a, a, a time when you probably would, is when you see that this woman's trying to set you up. Yeah, you looking you on your then, fucking yeah, surveillance footage, and you see right. dudes trying to come in the house, right. and then she swings on you. You like yo, you got to do what the fuck you got to do to survive. Yeah, man. So, like, I, yeah, yeah, hope we get through all of that. But you see how people is just like so easily impressionable. Yes, mm-hmm. and 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 also with the Oprah thing, I always say nobody cares about the truth and the lies more entertaining. Um, it's a, it's, 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 I it's, think all three of us have been uh, uh, on the other side of that. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And, and people, when people don't like you, they'll run with anything that's against you. So people don't like Oprah right now. Mm-hmm. So being that they don't like Oprah, they want to have some dirt on her to be able to kick her back in. They would love to be like, wow! Right, right, right. They would love to do that shit. Yeah. So people jump on shit that either reinforces narratives they already believe or, or, or has some type of confirmation bias for something they already think about you. Yeah, man. Like, just think about that. Oprah... Human trafficking. That Say it that. again. <laughs> Oprah and human trafficking. Like, I, I, the thing is, is that there's a lot of skeletons in people's closets and all that, but Oprah and human trafficking, they'd have caught it 20 years yeah, ago if that was real. Yeah. Like, nah, nah, on. they wouldn't. You they wouldn't have? Nah, we've seen that. We've seen how this shit play out. They wait till you good and about to be done with life. Mm, you do have a come, point. Before Bill they come you. <laughs> yeah, they don't, right. they, don't, they don't wait no more. Harvey Weinstein on Rikers, right? 23 yeah. years. That nigga's on the island. On That's crazy. Al- he might be Mac Baller by the by the end of this month. <laughs> so imagine, what all, imagine what all Kelly's gonna get. Oh, oh they gonna smack all Kelly. Seventy five years and coronavirus, nigga. They gonna get, <laughs> they gonna hit that nigga with everything. Oh he, man, he gonna have a rough bed. Yeah, he deserves it. He definitely deserves it. Listen, um, that's it for asking idiot. Uh, Hovain Wayno, thank you for pulling up today. Um, proud of y'all brothers, man. Thank you. Thank proud you. of everything proud of you that too, y'all. Bro. Likewise, man. Have proud of you too, Wayno. And achieved you, in brother, this industry. Real. You know, uh, it, it's it's funny to me because it's just like people talk to me about y'all like I don't know y'all. Like you know, it's just, it's just, like not even just, I'm just people just out about like yeah. you know I'm 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 trying to get in touch with Wayno at Asylum to let him hear this or yo do you know Hovain? You think he'd be interested in managing me? And I'm like, do I know these? Like, yeah, right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like they don't know our history. It, but this, it could, but that's dope though because we yeah. that generation. Like I'm sure, like back in the day, that's how Angie Martinez felt with Kaiser. You know mm, what I'm saying? Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like it's that. Like they they grew up in their era, and you know they still playing. So mm-hmm. salute to them. Yeah. But we growing up in uh, our era. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just it's just it's just a dope thing to see. So uh, congratulations on officially being industry niggas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to both of you. Hate that term. Fuck it. You want to give Fuck me it. your Twitters and Instagrams and all that good shit? Yes. And I gotta also plug. You know, I'm, I'm starting a podcast as well. Uh, Wayne knows Pod. You know what I mean? It's Fire. gonna be coming soon. Um, that's W A Y N O. S P O D. Who's that with young man? Um, it's me and I have a moderator named Kenya. Is it a O word? Yes. Is it independent? It's independent. Right. As of right now, we independent. I'm gonna talk to you. Yeah. I got I got something happening. Okay, <laughs> okay. But yeah, we're doing cool. that and then um Wayne on one one nine on everything. Uh Twitter, Instagram, uh Snapchat. If you wanna play 2K today, Wayne on one one nine on that as well. That's I'm accepting gamer tags. Yeah, man, I'm in a crib. I'm going hard. Like, Hove, me and Hove was texting yesterday about that, right? Yeah, I said, yo, I, find, I plugged my PlayStation in after three years. Right. Man. I ain't playing three years. In three I'll years. Please let the up. dollars start circulating again <laughs> so we can get the fuck out the house. I said, playing, man. Give Where me your at? Twitters and Instagrams, Hove. At Hovain on everything. H-O-V-A-I-N. Everything except for LinkedIn. Right. AKA <laughs> the money man. Yeah, man. At Hovain. <laughs> my new podcast coming soon. Gonna be called Best Seat in the House, executive produced by Van Lathan and Charlemagne. Hey, mm. listen, my guys, always, come on, let's get this fucking bread. Always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast.